Morning. Hi Tab836, how are you? Hi Neve. how are you? I don't know if you know me already. Um, my name is Annie. I'm here to do a theory test lesson for you. <coughs> I'll just get myself set up. Hello, good morning, Samik. How are you? I'll just add my link to this live. So I've got a link at the bottom left of the screen and that is a link to my theory course. I don't know if anybody here is preparing for a theory test, studying for a theory test. Let me know. Is anybody here studying for a theory test? Double tap the screen. Hello, Fjortunamasven. How do you say that? Uh, Emma Fischel, 63. Hi, how are you? So keep double tapping the screen. A few more people know that I'm here. Um, and I'm going to do another three hour live for you. So if you're struggling to pass your theory test, if you're preparing for it, you've you've already passed Emma Fischel 63, you don't need me. Just share this live. Share it. Um, you will be your third test. Karen Lisi. Um, that's why I do this, because people struggle and people fail this again and again. Um, so you don't need to. I will I will help you, but if you want to make sure you don't, you, you are going to pass them. Have a look at the course that I've just pinned for you. It's got everything that you need. Lee Nash, you got yours today. Um, cool, have you got any questions? Good luck for today, I hope it goes well. You've been driving 15 years, but still find refreshing my mind useful. What a great comment, yeah, brilliant. Um, sometimes people think they scrape through a theory test and yeah, I know everything about the theory of driving, but we realise, don't we, after driving um, on our own on the roads that we don't know everything there is to know about the theory of driving. So it's really great to keep on, keep on learning. <clears throat> so if you've got any questions, let me know now. It's a good time to ask me right now while I'm, um, while I'm getting myself set up, while I'm waiting for a few more people to join. The different colours. I am not going to do the studs on the motorway today. I'm going to oh, run in traffic light technique. Yeah, I'll be, actually, I'll be doing the motorway studs later on um, today in this lesson. Um, so I've got the slides set up for uh, arm signals, crossings, traffic light technique to help you with the motorway studs and super safety systems. So stay with me and I will help you with those studs later on. Um, so... My name is Annie. If you don't know me, let me know if you do know me. Make sure you are following me. My name is Annie. I'm an ADI. That means I'm an approved driving instructor. I'm an audit trainer. That means I'm on the official register for driving instructor trainers. I'm a, uh, a primary school teacher and I'm a theory test expert. And I'm here to make theory easy for you. Hi, beautiful Zerka. How are you? Um, so we'll go through a question. <clears throat> So double tap the screen, let me get up to one and a half thousand likes and we'll get started with our first question and in a couple of minutes we'll be going through arm signals if you want me to. If you um, if you struggle with those, I'll go through them. Um, want to start your what you're driving, your theory, this is it, start here. Sign up for this course, watch these, um, watch these lives. Um, that's the first, that's the first step is to do the learning. You wake up for this every morning. <laughs> awesome. You pass your theory on Saturday. Yeah, that's awesome. Good morning, Sam Bagum. Good morning, how are you? So yeah, make sure you keep on sharing. Thank you, thank you guys for sharing. Let's have a look at a quick question. Let's do this one here. Which of these signs means pedestrians in the road? This is a sign that lots and lots of people are getting mixed up with. So um, what do you think the answer is? Do you know the answer? For A, B or C in the comments. You passed, uh, I missed that comment. I passed my theory, now thanks to your course, would recommend you 100%. T Gulani, that's awesome, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so we've got lots of A's and C's at the moment. Which sign do you think means pedestrians in the road? So I've got A with a question mark, C, B. Thank you for taking the time. Teachers, it's a pleasure. I enjoy doing this. I really do. Okay, so we've got A's, B's and C's. Most More A's and C's. Um, make sure you put I, D, K if you don't know. Put the letters I, D, K, I don't know. And uh, hello, Herb Braid Styling, how are you? 
Cool, let's go through it with you. Well, first of all, um, let's look at the shape of the signs. If you notice the shape of the sign, first of all, because all triangle signs are warning signs. So if it's, a, if it's in a triangle, it's warning you about something. And all circular signs are orders. Make a circle with your hand. See the shape of an O for order. And red circle signs are prohibitory orders. That means you're not allowed to do it or you're not allowed to go there. So red O means no. Which one of those is an order? A, B or C? Because pedestrians in the road would be a warning. Pedestrians in the road would be a warning sign. Only two of these are warning signs. So we can get rid of one of them. Which one could we get rid of? Which one is definitely not a warning sign? So tell me which one is not a warning sign. Triangle signs are warning signs. Circle signs are orders. Katie, yeah, absolutely. So get rid of B. We're going to get rid of B because we know that that's an order. That's an order. Red O means no, and that one means no pedestrians. So we're left with these two. We're left with A and C. Why would there be a warning sign warning us that there are pedestrians walking in the road? Why would pedestrians be walking in the road and not where they should be walking? They don't normally walk in the road unless they're crossing the road, do they? So why would there be a, a warning sign warning us pedestrians might be walking in the road? Because, Chloe, because there's no pavement. Brilliant. There's no pavement because it's... Um, <laughs> because uh, it's a, maybe it's a rural road, a country road, and there's no path, no pavement. Okay, so one of these signs is warning you that there's pedestrians in the road. If it was pedestrians in the road, would it be one pedestrian or more than one pedestrian? If you look at this, it's got an S on the end of it. So this is a tip for this sign only. So if it was pedestrians, would there be one pedestrian or more than one pedestrian? Harry, you know it. Awesome. I'm glad you know it. But not, not everybody does. If it was, there would be more than one. Brilliant. There'd be more than one. So one of these signs shows a crossing and one of them shows more than one pedestrian in the road. Which sign means pedestrians in the road? One of them shows a crossing, a pedestrian on a crossing. And one of them shows pedestrians in the road. So A or C, one of them is a pedestrian on a crossing and one of them is more than one pedestrian in the road. You said A from the start, but a lot of people are still saying the wrong one. Yeah, it's absolutely, it is A. Yeah, pedestrians in the road, more than one pedestrian walking in the road. This one is showing you a pedestrian walking across a crossing. Okay, so notice the difference. More than one pedestrian in the road, a pedestrian on a crossing. Does that make sense to you now? Do you now know you're going to get that right from now on? Because a few people were... Um, you would have failed, but now you know it. You've come on here and you've learned something. That's brilliant. You've come on here, you've learned something, and you know that's one extra question that you're going to get right. If you don't know me, for those of you who don't, um, I'm, my name is Annie. I'm a driving instructor. I'm an audit trainer. So without the S, it would have been C. No, up, up, no, no, absolutely not. Um, it, it, that pedestrian's in the road, Josh. Without the S, it wouldn't be, would have been that one. No, the, that, those dashed lines are not a road. A road wouldn't be that narrow. Those dashed lines are a crossing, a pedestrian walking across a crossing. Um, so no, <laughs> the S is just a clue to help you to remember it forever. Okay, so no, they're completely different. That shows you two people walking face on towards you two people walking towards you that shows a pedestrian walking across the road in front of you doesn't it yeah so they're completely different pictures um, i'm a driving instructor i'm a, a audit trainer i'm a theory test expert i'm here to make theory easy for you and what i thought i wanted to do this morning um, is i wanted to go through easy arm signals does anybody here ever struggle with arm signals? I'm going to be live now until 12 o'clock, uh, about 12 o'clock, maybe a little tiny bit longer. Um, I'll do 9 till 12, Monday to Friday, uh, this, this week. 
Um, so um, does anybody ever struggle with arm signals questions? Let me know and I will make it easy for you. All the time. Yes, yes, yes. But loads and loads and loads of comments in, so I know there's loads of people. Okay, so double tap the screen. Let's get me up a few more likes so a few more people can join. And remember that absolutely everything that you need, you, do, you wouldn't struggle with anything if you went through this course that I've spent me, it's taken me years to put together for you. So what I'm doing is showing bits and pieces from the course. Um, and I'll share about five, six tutorials today, but in my course, I've got 90 tutorials. Cool, let's have, a look. let's have a look at a question first of all. Start with a question. What does this arm signal mean? Does it mean the driver intends to turn right, the driver intends to turn left, the driver intends to slow down, or the driver wants to keep you back? Put A, B, C, D in the comments, or I, D, K if you don't know. So some A's, B's, C's, and I don't know's. Cool. Well, what I'll do, keep putting your answers in, get me up to 20,000 likes, 20, 25,000 likes, and I will go through these arm signals and I'll make them dead, dead easy for you. They are really, double tap the screen like crazy. Uh, I've got 15 and a half. Um, out, there's only three arm signals to learn and they're dead 16 and a half. They're, only, they're really, really easy to learn as soon as somebody explains it to you, as soon as somebody shows them to you, up to 19 and a half, 20,000 likes. Brilliant, 21,000 likes, 22,000 likes. How quick can this go up? This is awesome. What will happen is more people will join, more people will learn this stuff, more people will pass their theory test. That's what I'm all about. Um, so just say the answer. No, I don't do that. I will um, just mute those comments. Okay, cool. So let me, first of all, what I want to do is go through why you need to learn this stuff. If you properly understand why you need to learn arm signals, it makes it a bit easier because people are like, why would I do arm signals ever? I've never even seen anybody do them. Well, you might never have seen anybody who stopped breathing, but we still need to learn how to do um, CPR for the theory test. Does that make sense? So, <laughs> yeah, of course I'm logging this out. Of course I am. Okay, so let's block that. Cool. So there's lots of stuff you need to know that you might never, ever need. You need to know about driving on motorways, even though you might never want to drive on a motorway. Does that make sense? Just put some why, a why in the comments for yes, if it makes sense, that there's stuff you need to know, even though you might never use it. You might never need it. Thank you, Kissy D. Thank you. Cool. So when you press your brake pedal, when you're driving along and you press your brake pedal, brake lights will light up at the back of the car. Do you agree with me? Just put a Y for yes. You agree with that. You know that. Brake lights will light up at the back of the car to tell people behind us we're slowing down or stopping. How important is that? It's really, really important that people behind us know that we're, um, we're slowing down or we're stopping. Otherwise, it could crash into the back of us. Makes sense. When you... Um, When you indicate, I missed that one, when you indicate left or right, your indicator lights will flash at the front of the car and the back of the car to tell people you're turning right or you're turning left. Does that make sense? Put some yeses in the comments if it makes sense that your indicator lights will flash and your brake lights will light up. Just put a yes in the comments if that makes sense. I'm glad you're really interested, Lewis Ward. I'm glad you're really interested. Cool. Okay, so... Does that make sense? It does. Brilliant. So, in case those three are those two, three things aren't working, if your brake lights are not working, your indicators are not working, you can't tell people what you intend to do. Why is that dangerous? What, why is it dangerous? Somebody put a comment in. Why is it dangerous if we can't tell people what we want to do? <laughs> cool. Why is that true? Yeah, exactly. It could cause a crash, couldn't it? It could cause a crash. People don't know what we're... They don't know we're going to move out to the right. They might be trying to overtake us and they could crash into us. They might, don't know we're slowing down. They could crash into the back of us. It can cause accidents. Brilliant. 
So there are three arm signals that you need to learn and that's all, just three signals and it's really, really easy. And now you realize, do you, do you put on me in the comments if you have answered theory test questions about arm signals, but you haven't thought to yourself, right, what I'll do is I'll go away before I answer these questions and I'll learn the three arm signals. You've just tried to memorize questions, memorize the answers to the questions. And it doesn't work like that for an awful lot of people. For most people, it doesn't work like that. So if we want those three arm signals, that's all it is. They're dead, dead easy to learn. Um, <laughs> and first of all, if you were riding a bike and you wanted to turn right, what would you do with your arm? It's exactly the same as if you were in a car. If you were going right, all you would do is put your right arm out of the window like that. That's all you do. Just put your right arm out of the window. So have a go at that, just do it. Just do it and put R for right in the comments. Just do it and put R for right in the comments. If you want to turn right, you just put your right arm straight out the window. It's as easy as that. <laughs> blinker. Do we use the word blinker in this country? Is it not an indicator? Um, so you just put right arm out of the window and it's as easy as that. So right is super easy. There's only three to learn. Now you know one of them because right is pro probably the easiest one to learn. Now, if you're turning left, you would um, imagine this, this circle of arrows. Imagine it's a steering wheel and you're steering round to the left, but all you're going to do is carry that arm moving in forward circles. So left is just forward circles, a bit like if you were turning a steering wheel to the left, your arm would carry on moving to the left. So left is forward circles. Do that, put an L in the comments and uh, let me know that you've learned that one because it's, it's, you've learned two of them now. Our right arm out for right and left is arm in circles. Brilliant. And then the a really another really easy one. You've learned three of you've learned two of them. There's only three to go, with only one left to learn, and that is slowing down. If you are slowing down, all you do is put your arm out of the window and put it up and down. Up and down means slowing down. Slowing down for up and down. So put that in uh, put um, S for slowing down in the comments and then let me know you have learned that one. I don't know what that means. I'm like, I don't know what you're trying to say to me. Okay, so put S in the comments, guys. So join in. Lots of people join in. Now, is listen, I have not decided, not me personally, I haven't decided that you need to know this stuff. The DVSA have decided that you need to learn this stuff, so I'm teaching it to you. I'm helping you to learn it. So there's no point in asking me why is it still in the theory test. I haven't decided that. I'm just teaching you what you need to know. Does that make sense? I'm teaching you what they have decided. Come. Cool. And I have seen the odd person use arm signals over the years. So you probably do need to know what they mean. Cool. So let's come back to the questions. Only three arm signals. And once you learn, once you realise that they're dead easy to learn, that right is just right and slowing down is up and down. The only other one is circles for left, looks like a steering wheel, then the arm signals are super, super easy. Let's go through this, um, let's go through this uh, question now. What does this arm signal mean? The driver intends to turn right, the driver intends to turn left, the driver intends to slow down, or the driver wants to keep you back. Now, one of those four is not even an arm signal. One of them is not even an arm signal. So we can get rid of that really, really easily. Which one could we get rid of? So everyone now put in the comments, I've not mentioned one of those. Which one is it? Which one have I not mentioned? Yeah, X13, brilliant, Puru, brilliant, Sammy. Yeah, I haven't mentioned 
James Shaw, get rid of D. Get rid of D, because that's not even an arm signal. The driver wants to keep you back is not even an arm signal. So we can get rid of that. So now, which one do you think is the right answer? Double tap the screen if this is helping you. Um, let me know, because there's always lots of silly comments in this, in this uh, lesson. So let me know if this is helping you. Uh, what does this arm signal mean? You can see the arms going round in a circle. So which one does this arm signal mean? The driver intends to turn right, the driver intends to turn left, the driver intends to slow down. Yes, Jay Hersey, Callum, brilliant. Oh, no, no, he's not, no, he's not, no, it's not. It's really helpful, brilliant, brilliant. Mrs. Wang, you hire you, her wife, brilliant, brilliant, yeah. Yes, user, it's B, the driver intends to turn left. If it was right, what would the arm signal be? Because somebody put it in to, for the people that don't, haven't seen it. What, if it was right, if it was in driver intends to turn right, what would, it, what would the signal be? It'd be right arm out as our rear. Brilliant. If it was the driver intends to slow down. So right, sorry, right is just right arm out the window like that. Super easy. If it was slow down, what would the arm signal be? If it was slowing down, what arm signal would that sleek and M, I can't read that word, M, yeah, and squirrels, yeah, it'd be up and down, up and down is for slowing down. So three arm signals, super easy. That's my easy arm signals lesson. Has that helped anybody? Has that helped anybody? Let me know, just put a yes in the comments if that has helped you and you now know one of them or all of the arm signals. Yes and no, there's only three of them to learn and you need to know them. Um, if you've learned one of them, then I have helped you. If you've only learned one, it's one that you didn't know earlier. So don't kick yourself if you can't learn all of them all together, okay? All at the same time. Thank you for your explanation. It's a pleasure, thank you for watching. Is it your first time watching my live? Who's here watching me for the first time? Good luck for 12 o'clock today. You didn't even know you needed to know them. Yeah, they're in the theory test. They're in the theory test, so you do need to know them. Um, other people, it's probably not you that you ever use them, probably, but you may see somebody in a very, very, very old car using them. You may see the police will do that to you, uh, could, could do that to you, okay, to ask you to stop. Um, when else might you see them? Tractor drivers sometimes use them if you're in a rural place. So you do see them occasionally, not very often, but you really want to know what people are trying to tell you. So who's watching me here for the first time? Let me know. Just put a um, if you're watching me here for the very first time. Cool, so a few people. So welcome, thank you for watching me. Um, thank you if you come back. I know I can see some names that I've already seen before. My name is Annie, I'm a driving instructor. I'm an audit trainer. That means I train people to become driving instructors. I'm a theory test expert. I'm here to make theory easy for you. And lots of people watch me for the first time. That's absolutely awesome. Um, been here a couple of weeks later, I have you. Well, thank you for coming back to me again. Um, I've created a course, and this course gives you everything that you need to pass your theory test. You don't need to struggle. You don't need to wonder how to prepare. People email me and say, how do I prepare after watching these lives? You don't need to do that. All you need to do is watch these lives and go onto this course. This course is only $34.99. It's only the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. And this person took my course. Just wanted to let you know that I bought uh, Test Buddy, that's my course, uh, after finding you on TikTok. I gave myself a month to practice. I had my theory test today. It's my third time taking it. With two small children, it's pretty difficult to keep up with revising. But, um, and then your mock test. I didn't quite complete it all, but managed to pass today and signed off one very happy mummy. Cool, you're buying the course tomorrow. Awesome, Chelsea. Let me just mute that person. That's awesome. 
So my name is Annie. I'm here making theory easy for you. Um, I've done those ones already. Um, I've got what, what I want to do now is go through my crossings lesson. Does anybody here ever struggle with crossings? Let, oh, traffic lights and crossings. Put a me in the comments if you do. Put a me in the comments if you ever struggle with crossings questions and I'm gonna make them super, super easy for you. Now, someone just said to me, I'm going through your course, but I'm struggling with signaling at roundabouts. Let me just go through that very, very quickly for you. When you're driving towards a roundabout, <laughs> who's that Libley Robin? <laughs> awesome. When you're driving towards a roundabout, you need to signal. You need to let people know which way you're going. Okay, so put a why in the comments if you're with me. Why means yes, like you're nodding at me. Okay, so just put a why in the comments for yes if you're nodding at me. Okay, so when you're driving towards a roundabout, you need to signal to let people know which way you're going. If you're going first exit left, you'd signal left when you were here. If you were going third exit or over to the right, you signal right when you got to here. But if you're going ahead, there is no signal to say I'm going ahead. That signal, that indicator doesn't exist, does it? So just treat it just like you're going ahead at a crossroads. If you were going left, you signal left. If you're going right, you'd be signaling right. If you're going ahead here, what signal would you be giving? What signal says to people, I'm not turning left, I'm not turning right, but I'm going straight ahead? What signal tells people GBR autos? Yeah, absolutely. Lee Nash, Frank, Sammy, brilliant. There is no signal that says I'm going straight ahead. Therefore, not signaling means I'm going straight ahead. The same at this roundabout. When you're here, when you're approaching a roundabout, not signalling means I'm going straight ahead. So when you're coming off a roundabout, you always signal to come off. When you're driving towards a roundabout, you might not signal, okay? So you always signal left to come off. Does that make sense now? Yes, fast lane 77, that, that is when you're on a roundabout. I'm talking, I've just said when you're driving towards a roundabout, okay? When you're driving towards a roundabout, when you're approaching it, signal left, right, or no signal means I'm going ahead. But you always signal to come off a roundabout. So if you're going left first exit, you'd be signaling here. If you're going second exit, you'd signal left when you got to here. If you go in third exit, you signal left when you got to here. You always signal to say, I'm turning. And when you're coming off a roundabout, you're turning. So imagine that roundabout is a straight line of road, a straight road. It's a straight road. If you're going down the first exit, you signal left here. If you're going down the second exit, you signal left as you pass the first exit. If you're going down the third exit, you signal left when you're going past the second exit. So you always signal to come off a roundabout. But you don't always signal when you're driving towards, towards a roundabout. You love my diagrams. I mean, it's awful diagram. I'm such a bad artist, but I hope it does help you, okay? So you always signal to say, I'm turning. Yeah, you always signal to say, I'm turning. And if you're coming, coming off left, you are turning left. Okay, let's go through Crossing Space Simple. Let me get up to 75,000 likes. Uh, double tap the screen, guys. Uh, let me know. Um, I, 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 I don't, I, we're not in Australia. <laughs> we're not going to talk about other countries. Let's just talk, let's keep it simple and just talk about this country, okay? Let's talk about what other people, other countries do. So double tap the screen. Let me get a few more likes. Um, 
and a few more people joining and then we can go through this lesson of crossings made simple 67 brilliant 60 68 fantastic 68,000 likes that's fantastic and a couple more people have joined Marie that's awesome to hear now I'm going to go through crossings made simple I'm going to make crossings easy for you and I'm going to use my traffic lights to help you with the crossings as well because we'll talk about uh, traffic light controlled crossings as well as other crossings as well so um um, thank you, Andrew. Thank you. So we've got uh, 75,000 likes. Brilliant. Let's start a um, with a question. We'll start with a question. I'll go through my lesson and then we'll come back to the question and you'll see how super easy it is to answer. So at a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? Is it flashing amber, steady red, flashing green or steady amber? So put A, B, C or D in the comments. And I, D, K, if you don't know, remember it's really important that you let me know what you know. I need to know what you know. So put IDK if you don't know. If I think everybody knows it, then I can skip past some of it, okay? So what, let me know you know the answer or you don't know the answer or what you think the answer is or IDK if you don't know. I should have a thousand comments coming in. There's a thousand people watching me. So the first thing that you need to know to answer theory test questions like this one is the traffic light sequence. Now, who on here knows it? and who doesn't know it? Just put yes or no. Do you know the traffic light sequence? Do you know what light comes on after what light? So just put yes or no in the comments. Let me see if I need to go through it with you or not. Um, not really, yes, 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 yes. If you don't know it, it's incredibly important that you tell me you don't know it. Otherwise, all the yeses will come in and I will skip over it. Um, but if you want to learn it, I can give you a really, really easy way of learning it. So it also, if I say what light comes on after green, what light comes on after red and amber, what light comes on after red, you would know all of that. Um, not necessarily. So a few people don't know. I need the no's. The yeses are awesome, guys. I love the yeses. Okay, but I need the no's to know if I need to help you. Okay, so the, let's go through the sequence with you. The sequence is dead, dead easy. But what's happened is, it happens to all of us, we don't try to learn it, we just try to memorise answers to questions. Just put me in the comments if this is you. You haven't tried to learn it, you haven't sat down or walked around or chatted to somebody or Googled it or spoke to your instructor. What is the actual sequence? You've just tried to memorise it and then it doesn't help you with theory test questions. And if you memorize this question and this answer, what can happen is in your theory test, it will not be the same question. It won't be the same answer. So then you will find it, thank you theory test, easy for the rose. Uh, and then you will find it so much more difficult to answer, okay? So the sequence is as easy as A, B, C. If you know A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you can learn this sequence just as easily and quickly as five-year-olds can learn A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? So if you tell yourself, I'm gonna learn it, tell yourself I'm gonna learn it right now, listen to me, I'll, t I'll tell it to you, and then I'll, <laughs> thank you for that, I'll tell it to you and a couple of times and then you can tell it to yourself and you'll find it's in your head all day really annoyingly. The sequence is super simple. It's red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it will stay in your head. I'll do it again. Keep on uh, double tapping. Keep double tapping the screen. So the sequence is dead, dead easy. It's red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it will stay in your head. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it stays in your head. Ah, 
now got apples, awesome. So do that without, I'll point to it, I'll point to them. You uh, say it out loud to yourself, say it out loud, whisper it out loud if you have to, then put a D for done that you know it now. So um, it, say it out loud, it stays in your head. Listen, children, children learn these sequences and these nursery rhymes and these songs so easy because no one says to them what comes after red what comes after yellow what comes after uh f in the alphabet they learn the song they learn the song and they find the learning super super easy so who's done that and how knows it and now knows it how knows it who's done that and now knows it let me know I've got to charge my ipad up Done, done. I need loads of done. I've just made a fool of myself for you guys, haven't I? You've got to admit, I've just made a fool of myself, okay? So you are in front of 800 people. So you've got to put loads, loads, loads more dumbs for me, please. Because there are people telling me I'm stupid on here. And I get it every single day. And I will keep on doing it so that you learn. I will keep on getting called those silly names. I don't care as long as you learn. But you've got to tell me you've learned, okay? You've got to tell me you've learned. Fantastic. And that makes me feel a little bit better. Now, the other thing you need to know that um, some people get mixed... <laughs> Thank you, Karen. That people get mixed up with is uh, the meaning of traffic lights and you know people say of course I know what traffic lights mean but they actually most people most people get some of them wrong most people do so let's go through them with you now you know if you know that red, I know you know this, guys. I know you know it, okay? But you know that red means stop and wait. So put an R in the comments for, uh, for red. You know that red means stop and wait. Just put an R in the comments and I can move on. I want to go through the one that people struggle with. So put an R in the comments. Let me know that you know. I want loads of R's, guys. Loads of R's. It's got to be a really interactive lesson this has. Loads and loads of R's. Brilliant. And put a G in the comments if you know that G green means go. If it's safe, obviously, you know that. I know that you know it. Green means go if it's safe. Now, we've got red, red and amber. So we've got red and amber and it comes on before the green. What does red and amber together actually mean? This is one that some people get mixed up with. You put lots and lots of words in. I find it really quite hard to read them because they just go off really quickly. Okay, so I've got stop and wait, get ready to go, get ready to go, go with caution, stop and wait, get ready to go, prepare to move off. Uh, okay, awesome. So... Let have a think about this. You're saying it means prepare to stop, prepare to go, slow down, go if it's safe. What must you do by law when it's on red and amber? Let's just say that you you are there's five cars in front of you at the traffic lights. Do you think it's law that you should get ready to go? Do you think it's law? When it goes to red and amber, even if you're five cars back, do you think it's law that you should get ready to go? No, that's not the law. Okay, so what is the law? The law must be one of two things. It's either you can drive through or you must stop and wait behind the line. So what do you think the answer is there? Do you think you can drive through, put A, or you, you have to stop and wait behind the line. Yvonne Sarah, you're here again, hello. Uh, you're always correct, aren't you? Brilliant. Sam so Abraham, hello to you as well. Yeah, absolutely. Stop and wait, well, who was that who said that? Uh, so Craig McBeth, hello again. Sophia, fantastic. I can't remember the person. Okay, so yeah, stop and wait until it turns to green. So red and amber together means stop and wait. That's what it means, okay? You must, it, it's telling you it's going to change to green. You can, you can um, get ready, you can prepare if you want to, if you're at the front of the queue or near the front of the queue. But it doesn't mean prepare, it means stop and wait, okay? So to, give me a yes, a Y for yes if you've got that. Stop and wait, stop and wait. Go a bit safe. This one, this one is just telling you 
that is going to change to green where you can go in a, in a second or two. Brilliant, you've got it. So stop and wait, stop and wait, go over it safe. Then it goes up to amber, steady amber, amber on its own. What do you think amber on its own means? What does steady amber mean? What does steady amber actually mean? Stop and wait, wait, go if it's safe, wait. Okay, so it does mean go or stop. That's what it does mean. It means one of those two. You either go on amber or you stop on amber. So what do you think you must do? When it's on amber on its own, do you think you should go through because it's not turned to red yet? Or do you think you should stop because it's going to change to red in a second? Which one do you think? There's over a thousand people on here now, so I really need your answers to come in now. I really need your answers. Put them in again and again for me. That'd be brilliant. 100,000 likes as well. Thank you so much, guys. So what are you, when you're answering theory test questions like this one, think to yourself, what is the safest and most sensible thing to do? And if you can go through your whole theory test thinking what is the safest and most sensible thing to do you're going to come up with the right answers a lot of the time so is prepare to stop which one is safer prepare to stop or stop which one is the safest so put um P for prepare to stop or S for stop. Which one do you think is the safest and most sensible thing to do? Is it prepare to stop or is it stop and wait behind the line? And what, does, what would prepare to stop actually mean? The answer is stop and wait behind the line. What does prepare to stop mean? How would you, how would you do that by law? You're going 50 mile per hour. You say, well, I was getting my foot slightly off the gas pedal. I was preparing to stop, okay? So no, stop and wait behind the line. All the lights mean stop and wait. The sequence goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it stays in your head. Remember that all the lights mean stop and wait apart from green. Going on amber shouldn't be seen. All the lights mean stop and wait. Now, it's, you go on green if it's safe. You stop on amber if it's safe. It's always if it's safe but it actually means stop and wait. Give me a yes in the comments if you understand that. Give me a yes in the comments if you understand, if you now know. Remember, you don't need to struggle with your theory test. I will teach you to pass. Go through this course. It only costs the same as one single one hour driving lesson. That's all it is. And you will pass it if you go all the way through it. Now, do you, what you need to know, so you've, I've taught you the traffic light sequence. I'll recap it, so don't worry. And I've taught you what all the traffic lights mean. Can you see what I mean? That people are getting mixed up. They think that amber and red and amber means they can go. And it absolutely does not mean you can go. It actually officially means stop and wait. All the lights officially mean stop and wait apart from green. So you need to know the difference between the different pedestrian crossings. Do you want to learn them? Shall I cover them with you? Are you going to give me a few more? I've got 984 people on here. I'm going to go through a few different crossings with you and I'm going to make it so easy. I'm going to give you little sayings and little ways that you can remember really, really easily what all the different crossings are. So get me up to 125,000 likes and I will get started with those five straight away. So double tap, I've got to two, uh, how many I've got? 104, 104 and a half. Um, why does amber light even exist then? Well, red, red and amber tells you it's going to change to green soon and on amber you stop if it's safe to do so. It's telling you that the full red's gonna come on next, okay? So that's why that's why I've not created these lights, um, but to go straight from a start to a, um, a go to a stop is hard. They're giving you a, an intermediary light, aren't they? Yeah, so if you are just touching the line, you're gonna to have to keep on going through. Does that make sense? 
So to go from, you can go to, you have to stop um, without anything in the middle would make it very, very hard, very, very difficult. But if you know that amber means stop and wait, when it's on green, you should be preparing to stop and wait. You can't be serious, this is common sense. Oh, wow, <laughs> follower, yeah, I can be serious. You, need, you know all the different crossings, that's brilliant. Stay with me, see if you can answer all of these questions. And if you do, that's awesome. But I know that most people don't. Um, and most people said that red and amber and amber meant that you can go. So, uh, but yeah, if you think it's the common sense, that's brilliant that you know it all. I love it when people know that know the stuff, the really good theory knowledge. Um, don't ask me about other topics, please. I'm doing this topic now. I'm doing crossings now. So I'm not gonna veer off into another lesson. I've got 860 odd people watching my crossings lesson. Ask me later when it's Ask Annie. The first crossing I'm going to go through is a zebra crossing. You know a zebra crossing, don't you? Yeah, just nod your head at me. Put a Y if you're nodding your head at me. It's not traffic light controlled. It's got zebra type markings, um, black and white stripes across the road like a zebra. It's got, um, it's got a Belisha beacon at either side, okay? It's got a black and white pole with a, big orange amber bauble on top called a Belisha beacon. You don't have to remember the name of it, don't worry. It's got zigzag markings. So there's zigzag markings, there's black and white stripes, and there's Belisha beacons either side, these big poles. Why have they got all that stuff? Why is all of that stuff there, guys? Why is all of that stuff there? So cares, yeah, brilliant, well done. Yeah, Lay Layla, yeah, fantastic. So that you've got you've got really good warning that um, that you've got a pedestrian crossing coming up because the pedestrian has priority to cross over the road. They easily notice, Sammy. Yeah, absolutely. Easily. So you can check your mirrors and slow down and prepare to stop to let a pedestrian cross over. What would you do if you've stopped? to let a pedestrian cross over, and they haven't started to cross, they're just standing at the side of the road and they're still looking left and right, what would you do? Would you just wait? Or would you wave them to cross? Go on, go on, go on, you can go in front of me. Which one would you do? Remember, I said, what is the safest and most sensible thing to do? Always think of the safest and most sensible option. Wait, patience, just GBR autos. Absolutely. Chelsea Foster, eye contact, smile. Never wave people across, says Scott. Absolutely never tell people what to do. What would happen? Yes, wouldn't. Uh, if you wave someone to get across on your driving test, what would the result of your driving test be? Anthony Spark, you would wait. Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. Just wait. Just have a think. Just imagine it's your grandma trying to cross the road. Yeah, it's your grandma. She's been crossing the road for 70 odd years. She doesn't need someone to tell her. She just might need, she might take a tiny bit more time to cross. Okay, so don't tell people, don't rush people on. You would fail if you told people to go because it's dangerous. You could say, go on, cross over. The person starts to cross over the road and a vehicle that you haven't seen comes from the other direction. It can cause accidents. It's dangerous and it's annoying when people tell you what to do. You are old enough. When you get past, I don't know, 12 years old, you're old enough to make your own decision about crossing a road. Brilliant. So put a Z in the comments. A Z for zebra. If you now know about zebra crossings, it's a major. Yeah, it is a major. It is a fail. Yeah, it is a fail because it's dangerous and we shouldn't be doing it. We should not be telling people what to do. You can tell them by what other people have put comments in, by bringing your car to a complete stop, that tells people, by looking at them, getting eye contact, smiling at them, just waiting patiently tells them that you, you're waiting for them. It might take a couple of seconds longer. Cool, let's move on to the next type of crossing. The next crossing is an equestrian crossing. An equestrian crossing, sometimes called a, I couldn't name it out of my head then, sometimes called a Pegasus crossing. You know a Pegasus, a flying horse, okay? Equestrian crossing, sometimes called a 
a, a Pegasus crossing. Yes, JD Louise, absolutely. An equestrian crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes, say it with me, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it stays in your head. Yeah, so an equestrian crossing is designed for horse riders and Craig Macbeth, I don't know. I think I think um, Diane had an idea. Ask Diane when she's on. Uh, so it's designed for horse riders and pedestrians to use together. So it's a bit wider. Thank you, Wiz. Is that a Wiz? The horses don't fly over, no. <laughs> it's a Pegasus crossing, but the, the horses still uh, trot, walk, whatever you call it, over. Um, so horse riders and pedestrians. There's a button. Who just said that? There's... It has a button high up easily for riders to press the button. Chelsea Foster, thank you. I didn't have to think about that. So it does, it has a button that's high up. So a horse rider can stay on their horse. They don't have to get off the horse to press a button that's too low down for them. Thank you for that, Chelsea, absolutely. So that is, um, they are horses, not unicorns. <laughs> Okay, so um, so put an E in the comments if you now know all about, all you need to know about an equestrian crossing. Just put an E in the comments. You failed 13 times, it's not normal. Malonia, well, it shouldn't be normal, but I've spoken to hundreds of people that have failed five, 10, 15, 20, more than 20 times, okay? That's why I'm doing this. I'm not doing it because people find the theory test easy. I'm doing this because 53% of people are failing again and again and again. Okay, so please sign up for the course below. It's there for you. Let's move on to the next crossing, a toucan crossing. A toucan crossing is a traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has the same sequence as traffic lights. Say it with me. It goes red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud. It stays in your head. A toucan crossing is designed for cyclists and pedestrians to use together. So at a crossing, at a pedestrian crossing, normally a cyclist should get off their bike and push their bike across the road. But at a toucan crossing, a cyclist can cycle across the road. And you can really easily remember, yeah, tap the screen, guys. You can really easily remember that a toucan crossing is for cyclists and pedestrians. It's for one, two kinds of people. If you think of toucan and two can cross. Toucan and two can cross. Does that help? And you put a T for toucan. If you now know what a toucan crossing is, and you'll remember it has the same sequence as traffic lights, it's for cyclists and pedestrians. Please put a T in the comments if you now know that. I should have about 700 T's coming in now because I'm helping you guys. You didn't know that. Well, you do now. Toucan, two can cross. Say it out loud to yourself because Alfie M, good, well done. If you say it out loud or type it into the comments or go and tell somebody, it go it just goes into your unconscious mind. That's why children keep on yeah, 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 talking about what they've learned. That's what they do, little children. It helps them to learn it. That's what we should do. We should talk to ourselves. Okay, so say it out loud. It will stay in your head. Yes, T9 is E. <laughs> okay, let's move on to the next crossing. The next crossing is a puffin crossing. I'm going to help you to remember this one super, super easily, what a puffin crossing is. A puffin crossing is another traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing that has the same sequence as traffic lights. It goes kinder, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it stays in your head. Brilliant. A puff in crossing knows when a pedestrian is on the crossing. Okay, it just knows. It's got a sensor. See this arrow pointing towards this black box. This black box is a motion sensor. It detects if anyone's on the crossing. If no one's on the crossing, it will change to green quicker. If someone's taking a long time to cross, it will stay on red for longer. 
but it has the same sequence as traffic lights. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Yes, my 4GI3, brilliant. A puff, you can easily remember that the puffin crossing has the same sequence, but it's the intelligent crossing. The one that will change depending on what's happening on the crossing. If you think of puffin and P-U-F-I-N, pedestrian, user, friendly, intelligent. Puff in intelligent. Just say it out loud to yourself. Well, the puff in's intelligent. The puff in is intelligent. Say it out loud. Type it in. Type P U F and a capital I N. Puff puff in. To help you remember forever, the puff in is intelligent. Says Kinder Balbuena. Yeah, absolutely. Ambelina puff in. Brilliant. Yeah. Brilliant, you've given yourself a way of remembering it forever. The puffin is intelligent. It has the same sequence, but it, the sequence will change quicker or slower depending on what's happening on the crossing. Oh yes, that's a long word to say. The puffin is intelligent, says owner. Can I say owner? Just the first part of it. T9 Izzy Wizzy, yep, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Put, put a P for puffin, let's put a P or, or, for puffin. If you now know that a puffin crossing is the intelligent crossing, just put a P for puffin if you now know that. You're going to get it really, really easy. Um, Leighton, don't tell yourself that. If Leighton, if your friend had their theory test tomorrow, would you say to your friend, you're going to fail? I'm going to move off topic for a minute. Yeah, Catherine, absolutely. Would you say to yourself, Leighton, I'm going to remember your name because my brother's called Leighton, okay? Spelled the same way. Would you say to your friend, you're going to fail, you're, you're going to fail. Would you be that unkind to your friend or your partner or your brother or your sister? You wouldn't. Don't be that unkind to yourself, okay? Just say so. Go on, you'll smash it. Just do your best. And if you don't, we're here for you. That's what you do to your friend. Don't tell yourself you're going to fail. Be kind to yourself, guys. Okay, let's move on to the next crossing. We've done Puffin. I know Puffin's got two Fs, Cameron Clark, uh, but this is a way of remembering. If you don't like it, don't use it. Okay, Pelican Crossing. A Pelican Crossing is another traffic light controlled pedestrian crossing, but it has a different sequence. A Pelican Crossing goes red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. It goes flashing amber. It doesn't go red, red and amber. It goes red, flashing amber. Only one crossing has the flashing amber phase. Only one crossing can flash. Only one can. Only the pelican can. Only a pelican can flash. <laughs> I make myself laugh saying it, but yeah, so say it out loud to yourself. Just put Pelly can, just put Pelly and then capital can. Chelsea Foster, awesome. Only a Pelly can can, only one crossing can, and it's a Pelly can. Yeah, does that make sense, guys? Say it out loud to yourself and help yourself remember that a Pelly can crossing is the only crossing which has a flashing amber phase. The only one of them can flash, only a Pelly can can. Brilliant. Yeah, so it goes red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. Other traffic lights and other crossings go red, red and amber. But Pelican goes red, flashing amber. So therefore, do you agree? Put a yes if you agree that flashing amber must mean something different to red and amber or to steady amber. Because red and amber means stop and wait. Steady amber means stop and wait. Flashing amber must mean something different. Don't you agree? Yeah, it must do, wasn't it? Otherwise, it wouldn't have flashing amber. Brilliant. So, yeah, JD Louise, you've got it. So, if someone's on the crossing, what do you think you need to do? If somebody's walking across the road in front of you, it's blooming obvious. It's, there's only one thing you can do, really, unless you want to break the law and hurt somebody. You're going to stop and wait. If someone's crossing and it's flashing amber, you're obviously going to stop and wait. That's easy. What about if there's no one on the crossing and it's flashing amber? If no one's on the crossing 
and it's flashing amber, then you can go. Brilliant. Brilliant. You can go on flashing amber if no one's on the crossing. Fantastic. So it's, if, if, if somebody said, wait, just in case, no, flashing amber means you can go. If you don't go when it's flashing amber and no one's on the crossing, how do you think that that would be marked on your driving test? If it was flashing amber and you thought, I'm just going to stay here and just wait just in case, what would, what would you guess, a you'd probably get a fail. It could be a minor, it could be a serious. Um, I'd be in time inclined to give it as a serious fault because it means, flashing amber means you can go. Now, now I have had somebody almost fail for it. So def you can definitely get a fail for not going because you haven't got a good understanding T9 whizzy. That's exactly it. It means you don't know the rules of the road. It's just like saying on green, I would wait just in case. Yeah, it's just, and um, how are the people behind you feel oblivious? How would people behind you feel if you didn't go, it was flashing amber and you didn't go. It's a really good comment, by the way. I'm really glad whoever said it. I'm really glad that you said it because a lot of people feel the same way. You're just saying, typing in words that other people are feeling, okay, and thinking, well, I just wait. People do it all the time. Well, I just do this just in case. It's not safe. Um, misled, yeah. So if people behind you, they get cross, they get frustrated, they get, they get really irritated, wouldn't they? Yeah, they would. If you didn't go when you were supposed to go, they'd be really, really irritated with you, yeah? Um, okay, good luck for today, user. They get mad, brilliant. Do you have to wait for them to fully cross over the crossing? Yeah, you do, you do. Um, you know, um, yeah, you should wait for them to fully cross the crossing. I mean, if you're not... If you don't stop exactly on the line, you stop a little bit further across, a little bit further back, you can sort of drift towards the line very slightly as, as we're about to step up the curb, but wait for them to get off, off the crossing. Cool. So put a P for Pelican if you now know that only a Pelican can, can flash. Only one crossing has the flashing amber phase and a Pelican goes red, flashing amber, green, amber, red. And you now know that flashing amber means if someone's on the crossing, stop and wait behind the line. If no one's on the crossing, you can keep on driving through and you should keep on driving through. Brilliant. So the question was, at a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? And what you need to know now, because we know it's not steady red or flashing green, you know that people are getting mixed up with, is it flashing amber or steady amber? I can't remember the crossings. I can't remember which one it is. We'll get, get rid of those two. Now you have to remember, Puffin crossing and pelican crossing. Which one has a steady amber like normal traffic lights and which one has the flashing amber? Which one has the flashing amber? So remember that, I'll ask you guys, what is the only crossing that has the flashing amber phase? Which is the only crossing that has the flashing amber phase? I can catch up, what an awesome name, Sarah Gee. Eris, yeah, brilliant. I can't read all your comments, I'm sorry. I, re I wish I could. Ling, yeah, brilliant. Navis, do, yeah, fantastic. Jada Louise, only a pelican can. Only a pelican can flash, okay? How are we gonna remember the puffin? What's the special thing about the puffin that we can help us to remember? The puffin is steady amber. It is Chelsea Foster. Yes, anything else about the puffin? How can we easily remember that? It's intelligent. Puffin intelligent. It's the, it has the same sequence as normal. It's just intelligent, Jade Louise. Yeah, brilliant. Leighton, awesome. Uh, Leighton, so you know your stuff. You know it, okay? So tell yourself, I know my stuff. Okay, puff in, puff intelligent. Pelican can flash. Awesome. So what's the right answer here? <laughs> you glad you passed it ages ago. 
What's the right answer? At a puffin crossing, which colour follows the green signal? You now know it. Even if you know it, you put it in before, but put it in again. Let me see all of these letters coming up and let me see people double tap on the screen to tell me, yeah, I have learned something. You know it. Brilliant. And if you know it, tell yourself I know it. If you didn't know it, just say I've now learned it. If you, and the right answer there is a steady amber. Because a puffin crossing doesn't have flashing amber, does it? A puffin crossing does not have flashing amber phase. Brilliant. You're learning while cooking, multitasking uh, sparkle. That's my crossings made simple lesson. Just put a me in the comments if you have learned something, if you now know a bit more about crossings. You've learned that a pelican can flash, it's the only one of them can, or a puffin crossing is the intelligent crossing, or you've learned that um, as a zebra crossing, you must never gesture people to go across, or a toucan is two can cross together, or you've learned that the sequence is red, red and amber, green, amber, red, say it out loud, it stays in your head, or you've learned that all the lights mean stop and wait apart from green going on amber, shouldn't be seen but you do know that flashing amber means you can go if no one's on the crossing yay no 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 stopping distances m m2 photography m photography no brilliant so i've, I've covered that so you've, you've had about how many different lessons in there about three lessons that are included in my theory test course um, in that obviously in an interactive way so it's taken longer but you've had three lessons there's about 90 in my course altogether because and I've shared those today because that those three lessons will help you answer a fair few questions quite a lot of questions cover those details that you have just learned and you haven't just memorized them you have learned them uh, there's 1.9 million people taking tests 879,000 passes, that's a 47% pass rate. Now, is there only 750, no, Court Harold, the, the, the Court Harold, they are not only 750 questions they can ask you. The questions in that you practice are not the same as in the actual theory test. That's why you need to know the traffic light sequence. You need to know what the traffic lights mean. You need to know the difference in the crossings. They won't ask you these questions that are in your apps. It will be different questions, okay? Different questions, the same topics. That's why people are failing. Someone said before, I failed it, I think they said 14 times, is that right? Someone said I failed it 14 times, it's not normal. It is unfortunately quite normal. It's quite normal because 53% of people are failing again and again and again. And one of the reasons they're failing for is because they think that the questions in the apps are the same questions in their test and they'll learn all those questions because they can they've got a good memory they can learn all the questions and answers then they go to the test um they go to the test and they see different questions they see different questions and they get really um oh connor that's awesome that is really good because it's um I'm preparing a HGV course and it's, uh, it's, it's hard work, so well done. Um, so lorry driver, on um, Connor, um, Connor the lorry, lorry driver, everybody. So why do people fail? They fail because they think the questions are the same. They just go and memorise answers to questions and the questions aren't the same in the theory test. I keep failing by one point. That again, you're, you're laughing. Um, it's not, it's quite normal. It's quite usual to keep on failing. Who else? Let's make fit Farid feel a bit better. Who else has failed by one or two points? One or two points once, twice, three times, four times. Who else has done that, guy? Just put a me and let um, fit, 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 oh, fit Farid feel a bit better about themselves, yeah? Me, me, yeah, me, 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 see what I mean? <laughs> So your, your friends might have passed in the first attempt, your brothers and sisters might have passed, but there are thousands and thousands and thousands of people. In fact, there are only 879,000 passes from 1.9 million tests. So you are not on your own for failing, okay? You got your test in a week, keep watching this. If you think you need more help, then please go onto this course. Do, don't, you don't need to fail. Because failing becomes, well, how do you feel fit and, and other people on here? Do you feel, but on Eve, you find it embarrassing. Do you have to get 100% on the test? No, you don't. You have to get 43 out of 50 on the test. Um, 
do you do you find, put an E if you find it embarrassing to fail your theory test? Stay with me, guys. I've got what have I got coming next? Oh, my traffic light technique is coming next in a few minutes. Put an E if you find it in, or frustrating. Um, some people find it frustrating because you know I think essentially because people some people say. Make sure you do all of it in greenhouse motion. I only did one part. I failed. Oh no, Ashley. Okay, that's really, really great. Let's come back to this one, uh, uh, Ash. Why do people fail? Um, people fail because they don't practice both parts of the theory. Okay. I know loads and loads of people, loads of people, hundreds of them over the years. I've said, I've said, what, you, what how are you doing with your house of perception? Oh, I haven't done any of that yet. I haven't done any of that, that yet. I've just done the questions. A week before has a perception. Oh no no, I'll, I'll have a look at that. Oh yeah, I did one and I scored five, so I'm fine. Please practice the has a perception. Please practice both parts of the test. I had one pupil many 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 years ago who failed the has a perception. So then she, next time she only revised has a perception and failed the questions. And next time she only revised the questions and failed has a perception. And I kept saying to her, please do both parts. Stop thinking about it as just one part of the test. Um, it's a really really good lesson there. You know you can do it again. It's a waste of time to not do both parts and prepare. Um, is one month enough to prepare? Yes, it's your girl. Absolutely. Most people take between two, um, two and six weeks to go through this course. But most people, all of my students do it within two or three weeks. All of them. Um, it's it's two, two, two to three weeks is enough time to prepare. But it depends. I don't know if you've got 10 children or you work seven days a week, 12 hours a day, do I? Do you know what I mean? But, but someone said to me the other day, I'm in... Uh, I'm doing my cleaning while I'm revising. I'm at the gym yesterday. I had somebody at the gym while they were watching me. Um, there's all, you can multitask. You can be on the bus on the way to uh, college, school, work. You can find 10 minutes of time. You can't book your driving test until you pass your theory test. So I want to teach you to pass. So I've created a theory test course for you. And what I want you to think about is don't think I need to go on um, ZMatch Ask Annie's slide in a minute. Please ask me again then, okay? Ask me again when it's Ask Annie's slide. Um, what I want you to think about when you're preparing for your theory test, don't think, ah, oh, right, okay, I'm going to sit down at six o'clock and do an hour's revision. You don't need to do that. Just do 10 minutes in the morning. Watch a couple of videos while you're brushing your teeth. Yeah, uh, while you're having your breakfast, maybe answer a few questions, 10 minutes in the afternoon and then 10 minutes in the evening, 10 or 15 minutes, three times a day would be 30 to 45 minutes a day. Don't do that every day. Do it five or six times a week. You will get through it. Don't think it has to be an hour and hours and hours at a time. Don't do that. Not unless you want to, of course. You don't need to do that. What I've done is I've spent years finding out what you struggle with thousands of hours designing techniques even things like only uh, like my traffic light technique red red and amber green amber red say it out loud it stays in your head just ways of remembering stuff to make it easy for you i've got hundreds of those things that i've little and often is the best way to revise um catherine you don't you definitely know your stuff don't you um she's an amazing tutor oh thank you it's time to leave Oh, oblivious. i see you again. Thank you for joining me. What I've done with all that stuff that I've put together, because I did train, I spent three years at university training to become a primary school teacher and I'm a driving instructor and a trainer as well. And I've, so I've, what I've done is I've used all of that skill, I suppose, to put together worksheets and video tutorials and fact lists. Those things help you learn that all the official questions are there. Just don't overwork your brain by doing too much in a day and getting stressed. Anthony Sparks, what a great comment. Why you don't need to, do you? Because the thing is, you don't learn anything. People sit there to revise for hours and hours and they've not really learned anything after the first 20 minutes or so. They've not learned anything. They just feel like they're studying. Um, oh, Matt Munns, thank you. There's official DVSA questions. The DVSA have given me the official questions. So you guarantee the most updated questions, official case studies, um, anxiety techniques, question techniques, hazard perception techniques, as well as practice clips. 
and games, you will be 100% prepared to pass. You don't need to struggle, guys. You really don't need to struggle. It's had more than 10,000 passes so far. I should change that slide again because it's getting more and more, hundreds more every single week. It's only 34.99. Um, you can learn without even trying when you listen to the fact the facts list. Have a look at this um, video. Then I'll answer some questions. And then we'll get on to the next lesson, which is my traffic light technique to help you remember the colours of the motorway studs super easily. A really great technique. If you haven't seen it, you must stay with me. In the meantime, click on the link for the course. Have a look at this one minute video. In the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course for all 14 theory topics. There's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to watch all the video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learned the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions when you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic. Going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions Techniques for doing hazard perception and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. If you're one that suffers from test anxiety, then I have put techniques in the course that help you to get rid of it. You don't go to your tests feeling anxious if you go through the techniques that are in my course. Do the learning, do the uh, confidence uh, techniques, and you will go to your test feeling confident. There's also techniques to help you score well in your hazard perception test. So what a lot of the apps have got is lots of practice clips. I don't just give you clips. I, I, I talk you through what you're looking for, how to click, when to click, what the DVSA are actually looking for. So I'll make it easy for you uh, to learn and score well. There's techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. While I'm live, if you click on now, you're going to get four bonuses. You're going to get a, ha a hazard perception course. It's worth 9 99 you're going to get a hypnosis course with three tracks on there because I'm a master practitioner of hypnosis as well. You're going to get a track for theory test confidence, one for driving test confidence and one for driving confidence as well. So those three tracks are there for you and two free ebooks. Catherine says, I love the hypnosis. I went to my test so calm and confident. That is amazing because that becoming a hypnotherapist was <laughs> incredibly hard, incredibly hard. Um, would you use hypnotherapy? Would you, it's, just, it's basically deep relaxation. That's all it is. Um, but um, I was the kind of person that would have said no a few years ago. Absolutely not. So to do it in a course as part of my NLP, I was against it at first. And then I found it the most wonderful thing um, so if you would use it it's there for you two free ebooks one by Diane Hall one by myself all of that stuff worth 34.95 that's what you get for free if you sign up while I'm live stay with me I've got ask any slide is coming up so you've got a question for me um, then <laughs> then please ask me in a second you pay once use it for as long as you need it for um, you're usually an anxious mess in tests and you, you weren't because of that. Yeah, I, I, I used to second guess myself all the time. Who does that? Second guesses themselves all the time. That's the right answer. I think that's the right answer. No, I'll put that answer because I can't possibly be right. I'm not clever enough to know that I'm right. And I would second guess myself all the time and fail. And sometimes rather just not put anything even when I was in school. Very many, many years ago, I just wouldn't write anything down. I thought, well, I don't want to be, I don't want to be wrong. So I won't write anything down. It's crazy. Holly, did you do everything in the course? the whole 100% of the course, because no one does 100% of the course. So if you want to send me in your worksheets and all your test scores and, and, and let me know. Uh, you can have to, you have to DM me for that. 
Oh, you second, did you do the anxiety bits? Second guessing yourself. Second guessing yourself, absolutely. Do the anxiety bits and you'll stop yourself from doing that. Okay, as soon as you start doing the course, you will quickly see and hear how you're going to pass. But if you do feel anxious, if you are second guessing yourself, then you you do need to go through those anxiety bit, um, bits there in the course to help you uh, because that's where you can fail. You've got the knowledge and I'm just going to fail because of those bits. Um, so you, you, you're welcome to DM me. But yeah, you, you, there's, there's bits that you didn't, I know, I know. Marja, yes, it's different, different countries why of course it's different in different countries it's a different yeah different countries have different tests um so carla may smith went through my course i passed six times after buying your course on the 19th of september thank you so much how long does the course take um the course takes however you long to, want to take doing it danielle some people will do it in four days that's very very quick some people do it in a week that's quite quick it can be done though uh, a lot of people take two or three weeks um up to six weeks is your course pc no it can be done on the phone you can do it on the phone you can do it on and on any way you can get online you can do the course so phone ipad computer um desktop wherever you want to do it do we use loads of distances as in the seconds not meters oh yeah these are the seconds yeah absolutely the seconds um do you know the stopping distances as in seconds guys put yes or no Sparkle, have you? Can you explain it again? Explain what again? Sorry, I don't know what you mean. So it, tell me what you mean, beauty. Oh, was your beauty. Do you know, guys, second distances in seconds? Do you all know that? Put yes or no. You've learned it in metres. Well, that's a, that's a, that's harder, isn't it? That's hard to learn. In seconds, it's dead easy to learn. Just you, you must put yes or no. I won't discuss it if everyone knows it. So I will discuss it if you don't know it. Holly, I bet you do know it. I bet you do know it. Okay, so what stopping distances? Let me just explain. I'll take it back a second, back a step for some people who don't know what we're talking about. Is that okay? So what it means is this is this is a car in front of you and you are in the red car. I need a green car because I'm green. Okay, you need to, so you are in this red car. This is you in the red car. Okay, you, you need to leave enough gap between your car and the car in front of you. There needs to be a good enough gap so that if this car has to break suddenly, you don't crash into the back of it. Does that make sense? But a why for yes, if that makes sense. You need to be far enough back from the car in front of you so you don't crash into it. And it's going to be different whether it's a dry road, whether it's a wet road, or whether it's an icy road. That makes sense, brilliant. Now, if it's dry, you've got it's good conditions for stopping. If the roads are dry, that's good. That's better than if they're wet or, that, or if they're icy. So if it's dry, you need to leave two seconds between your car and the car in front of you. It's not car lengths, okay, so don't get mixed up. It's always a time gap. It's seconds. It's not car lengths, it's seconds. So don't get mixed up because they'll put that in the theory test, okay, so don't get mixed up. It's seconds. It's time. How will you leave enough time? Well, watch this car. Watch this car in front of you as it's driving along and watch it go past something that's not moving like a, a lamp post, okay? And as this car gets to the lamp post, you say only a fool breaks the two second rule. If you get to the lamp post, as you finish saying it, you are two seconds behind. So when it's dry, you need to be two seconds, you need to leave two seconds between your car and the car in front of you. Put a two in the comments if that makes sense. Sparkle, you know your stuff, you know your stuff. Live moon, it's seconds, okay? So who told you that? Maybe if you're, I'll talk about that in a second though. You don't get it, don't, Jasmine, don't, don't worry. Don't worry, just remember two seconds, okay? I'll do a video on it, I'll do a video on it. You must follow, click on this link here. Look, click on this link and follow my um, new 
new account, my new TikTok account, TikTok Theory Revision. Follow that and I'll put a video in later. So in dry weather, it's two seconds. When it's wet, you need to leave longer between you and the car in front. When it's wet, it's doubled to four seconds. Do your fingers as well to help you remember. When it's dry, it's two. When it's wet, it's double to four. When it's icy, it's 10 times the gap. 10 times two is 20. Two seconds, double to four seconds, and 10 times the gap, which is 20 seconds. Okay, so put, do, does that make sense? 20 seconds when I see it's always a time gap. The time distance was in the case study part of my questions, so it's important to learn, says Catherine. Thank you for that, Catherine. It's, I've not taken a theory test for many, many years. Uh, and I've never taken a learner theory test. It didn't exist when I was young, so when I learned to drive. So it's really, um, it's really interesting for me to hear comments like that, Catherine. So thank you. Well explained. Thank you. Um, so if you don't understand, don't worry about it. Just remember two double to four, 10 times, okay? And your driving instructor will explain more. I will put more videos in. Uh, any more questions before I move on to the next section? I'm really enjoying this question session, but I want to get on with the next lesson. I do enjoy answering your questions. Um, oh, G Kent, sorry, I missed that. Uh, let's have some smiley faces with that. G Kent 88. So I've got my test at 12 and a big grinny face. Tell yourself you're gonna pass. Like I said before, like I said before, you might not have heard me, but think about what you would say to your friend if they had their theory test. You'd be smiling at them. you go, oh yeah, great, you're going to get there, okay? Be, be as kind to yourself as you are to other people. And if you would say to your friend, oh, you're going to smash it, mate, then say that to yourself. <laughs> G Kent, yay, awesome. Speed limits, I can't go through all speed limits, um, but let's go through, um, okay, on a single and dual carriageway road speed limit. Okay, so on a single carriageway road, the fastest you're allowed to go, if you see a national speed limit sign, do you know what that looks like? If you see a national speed limit sign on a single carriageway road, then the speed limit is 60 miles per hour. If you're driving, hang on a sec, another prop, I like my props. If you're driving a car on a single carriageway road, it's 60 miles per hour. If you're driving a car on a dual carriageway road, it's 70 miles per hour. So 60 and 70. If you're driving a car and towing a caravan, it's 10 miles per hour less. If you're towing a trailer or a caravan, it's 10 miles per hour less. So 60 on single, 70 on dual. That's for cars and motorbikes, guys. That's for cars and motorbikes, okay? Cool. The link for the course is there. If you are learning anything, if you think I'm teaching you anything, then you know you haven't been taught properly before if you're failing and if you're struggling it's because no one's taught you before oh Marge and May that's awesome and so sign up for the course guys you won't regret it studs on a motorway says G Kent you're in luck G Kent um because I'm doing that now Marge and May I go live Monday to Friday 9 till 12 this week next week it might change okay there'll be more what's the date this week I don't know what date it is I'm forgetting yeah, so next week there'll be more lives, okay? But this week, 9 till 12, Monday to Friday. I'll try and do a couple more, but I, my, my throat goes. If you're towing on a single carriageway, it's 50. Fantastic, Ford. Okay, so don't forget to, um, the course is there, pinned for you. It's pinned below. Have a look at it. Um, subscribe to me on YouTube as well by clicking on the link. Follow my brand new TikTok account, which is my TikTok theory revision. So all you'll see in that account is me and these slides. Um, and I'm showing you in very quick videos, okay? So um, have a look at that account, because if you are preparing for your theory test, um, you're not scrolling through other stuff as well. It's just theory revision. Um, can you get a discount? You're, everyone's getting a discount because you're getting 70 pounds worth of product for 35 pounds. It's the price of one single one hour driving lesson. That's all it costs. Now, I want to go over my traffic light technique. Oh, I came back last night. <laughs> uh, when 
tanned crafter crafter so yeah it's, it's, it's just a weekend away um I'm, I'm away for 10 days in july i don't know what i'm gonna do then i'll get um i'll get um withdrawal symptoms not doing these lives because i really do love doing them but yeah i was away friday till monday um I'm, I'm home i'm home now um so traffic light technique to remember the colors of the motorway studs who wants me to go over this lesson with them whoever struggles with motorway studs Best advice on before taking theory tests. Do you mean the day before or do you mean, I can't. <gasps> I asked about gears, I just don't ask Annie, so I can't talk about gears now. Sorry, ask Annie another 10 minutes, another 10 minutes, ask, ask Annie's slide again. Okay, drawings, you've, you know it, cool. Okay, so what are motorway studs? There's people asking me different stuff, but I'm gonna cover this now. When it's Ask Annie, that's the time to ask me other specific questions, okay? Past my theory driving test, eight months pregnant. Oh, well done. Lots of people say, can I, can I do my driving test when I'm pregnant? I'm like, of course you can, yeah, of course you can. Well done, you passed it. So first of all, what are motorway studs? The family love, are you in my course? Are you in my course? Do people do theory to course from you? Yes, they do, the course pinned below. What are motorway studs, guys? Does anybody know what actually are motorway studs? Um, because some people will be saying, well, actually, I, um, Zima, I asked you to ask me about gears, or ask somebody, when it was the Ask Annie slide, and it didn't come up, so I didn't talk about it. Okay, so when it's Ask Annie, then you need to ask me about gears, not when I'm in the middle of a lesson. I'm sorry, I really want to answer you, but please stay with me, and I will talk about gears. I do want to talk to you, I do want to help you. Okay, so please stay with me. When it's the Ask Annie slide, ask me again, and I will talk about gears. Um, okay, um, so yeah, so some people call motorway studs cat's eyes, um, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you missed it. You probably went off to get a cup of tea or something. Um, so cat's eyes, a lot of people call them cat's eyes. Why? Because when you shine lights, uh, a torch, onto the eyes of a cat, well, those, the, the, the cat's eyes will shine up really, really brightly, don't they? Oh, just go and get my light light. So cat, the cat's eyes shine up really, really brightly. So what happens with motorway studs? is when in the dark, if you when your car lights shine onto them, the lights shine up really, really brightly. And the different colors are between the different lanes. So you can really easily and clearly see what lane you're in. I'm sorry to hear you failed. You don't need to fail again. I'm here every weekday morning and this course covers everything that you need. Make sure you go through all of it. So cat's eyes, um, we, a lot of people call them cat's eyes, but they're called motorway studs, so they can be seen easily at night to keep you in the correct lane. Exactly, you know what lane you're in because you know what studs, what color studs are next to you. Give a yes, a Y for yes, if that makes sense. When I just plug these batteries into charge, I'm constantly charging batteries so that you can see me clearer. So put a Y for yes, if that makes sense to you. And I'll be straight back. I'm just here plugging my two batteries in. Brilliant. Okay, so let's start with a question. Let's start, where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? Now, it's really important that if you know the answer, you put the answer in. If you don't know the answer, you put IDK. I need to know what you know. If I don't know what you know or what you don't know, I can't help you, okay? So let's make this as interactive as possible. If you know, put the answer. If you're guessing, put a question mark. If you just don't know, then put IDK. There are times that I do these lives and it's full of people that have already seen the lesson and everybody knows so I can I can um I can skip past some bits. Does that make sense? There are completely different questions to the test. Yeah, Ion Landria. Ioni Landria. Yeah. What well, if you know the motorway studs, it doesn't matter how you're asked the question, you just know them. In the test, it is different questions. 
because there is a test, okay? It's not a test of your ability to memorize that the answer to this question is C, or the answer to this question is D, or the answer to this question is A. It's a test of how, where are the motorway studs? Do you know where they are? So let's go through my traffic light technique. And I call this my traffic light technique because I was sat and I was thinking, how can I help these people who can't memorize, who can't learn this stuff? The questions are worded differently, yes. Don't worry about that if you know your stuff. When I was trying to think of technique to help you, my traffic lights were next to me. And I just thought, hang on a minute, there are red studs, there are amber studs, there are green studs, and there are white studs. How can I help you to remember this stuff forever? Now, some people use the technique that Calvin has just put in, the word motorway, okay? Um, I don't tend to use it. We've talked about it a couple of times. Can look at Calvin's comment, guys. Calvin717, the way that per the person, uh, they have written motorway, R-W-A, -R uh, red, white, amber. That, help, that helps some people to remember. But I'm going to give people that don't know how to spell <laughs> A, a, te a technique as well, but I'm glad you know that one, um, Calvin. Let's go through some very simple questions. Oh, asked by Faz, please DM me. Please DM me. What does it mean? Calvin is a really good technique for, mo for a lot of people, a lot of people, about half people. What does it mean if the red traffic light shows? This is for learners, little Miss Irish. This is for learner drivers. But a lot of people who pass the test do watch as well. Okay, what does it mean if the red traffic light shows? If you're driving, and I know you know what it means, but just say, just tell me anyway. Just say it anyway, okay? Because just type it in because it helps it to go into your head, okay? So if you if the red traffic light shows as you're driving along, what does that mean? What must you do? It's not a trick question. It's like, yeah, it's blooming obvious. Everybody knows, don't they like DD? Yeah, Sammy, yeah, brilliant. Red means stop and wait. It can't yet yeah, stop at the line. Brilliant, stop and wait behind the line. Brilliant, red means stop and wait. Cool, this is part of it going into, this is part of my technique to get it into your head, okay? So what does it mean if the green traffic light shows? Again, you know this one, it's super easy. You know what it means, don't you? Uh, lo local, oh, I'm not gonna say the rest of that, local. <laughs> um, Jada Louise, Nikki, Nikki, Nikia, yeah, awesome. Green means go, smoking car, brilliant. Green means go if it's safe. It's always if it's safe. They add if it's safe on, but it should always be if it's safe, shouldn't it? So green means go if it's safe. Brilliant. Now, the sequence, I've already covered this if you've been with me already, but the traffic light sequence is red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it stays in your head. So we've got red and amber together and we've got amber on its own and they both mean the same thing. What do you think they mean? If you've already seen my, my crossings lesson, you'll know exactly what they mean. They both mean exactly the same thing. Red, red and amber, green, amber, red. Say it out loud, it stays in your head. Red and amber and steady amber both mean the same thing. And they don't mean prepare to or get ready to. They mean Felix, stop and wait. Brilliant. Not prepare to stop. No, it's definitely not prepare to stop. It's stop. Prepare to stop is not something official, is, is it? It's not an official um, um, instruction, okay? It's stop and wait. All the lights mean stop and wait, apart from green. Going on amber shouldn't be seen. Amber means stop and wait. Let's look, go, go on to my technique. Has that helped anybody? Just put TL for traffic lights, if that's helped anybody. Just put TL for traffic lights, if that's helped anybody. You might have already seen that from earlier, but I really want you to know the sequence, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. If you say it out loud, it stays in your head. All the lights mean stop and wait, apart from green. Um, oh, hello from Spain. Spain. I want to learn Spanish. I, 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 love, I love Spanish language. Um, I've started learning, but don't talk to me in Spanish. 
<laughs> so you need to know what colours are between which lanes. Now we've talked about what the traffic lights mean. Let's cover my traffic light technique. So are you ready? You're driving down the motorway. Okay, so imagine you're driving down the motorway, your car's breaking down, you're in an emergency and you're on a regular motorway. Come on, start, yeah. Good, thank you. <laughs> you, you. You're in an emergency. Where would you go if you need to? See, see what I do with Spanish language is I, I, I'm put under stress and I forget, I forget all the sp little bit of Spanish I know, I forget it because I'm under stress. <laughs> okay, so where would you go if you need to stop the car? I need lessons like this in Spanish, actually. That's what somebody in Spain used to do this for me, for the Spanish language. So where would you go in an emergency on a regular motorway? It is to the side of the left, local. It is on the left, yeah, it is. What's that lane called? Oh, you can't write it in. You can't type the word in. Okay, just put the initials. TikTok have banned a fair few words, I've <laughs> realised. A fair few words that I need you to say, okay? So just put the letters in, the initials in, and then when a few people have done that, what's that le extra lane called on the left? It's, it is, yeah, it's a lane on the left. Jinx angst, Axton, yeah, HS, 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 awesome. It's called the hard shoulder, okay? So the, the lane on the left is called the hard shoulder. And it's the lane that you go into when you're breaking down. And you're breaking down you're in an emergency. You only use it in an emergency. It's called the hard shoulder. And you go there to stop and wait for help. I know, Safir, you're right. So you go there to stop and wait for help. So to stop and wait for help, you go on to the hard shoulder. Red means stop and wait. <laughs> so what colour studs do you think must be next to the hard shoulder? Just type it in now. It's super obvious. It's super easy. You know the answer now, don't you? Say it out loud as you're typing in, or just type the first letter in, that's fine. Initials um, are, are good enough. To stop and wait for help, you go onto the hard shoulder. Red traffic light means stop and wait. So what colour studs do you think are next to the hard shoulder? Keep the answers coming in, guys. There's 487 people on here. Let's have a few more answers coming in. Do you want some, do you want some more of this? Brilliant. Now, if you're driving, along and you've got the hard shoulder next to you, what lane must you be in? Lane one, the first lane, lane two, the middle lane, or lane three, the furthest right-hand lane? What lane must you, hi drawings, yeah, well done. Jason Louise, Pedro, L Johnston, yeah, fantastic, Sharon. Livu, Gray, Sammy, yep, yeah, Stephanie, brilliant. You must be in lane one. So between, le hi Trucker Nate, how are you? Between lane one and the hard shoulder are red studs. Now put me in the comments if you will always know forever and ever and ever where the red studs are. Red means stop and wait. Red for danger, red for stop. You go on the hard shoulder to stop and wait for help in an emergency, yeah? Um, so red studs are next to the hard shoulder. Fantastic. Now, as a reminder um, to you, TikTok have banned certain words. So if the word you're trying to type in isn't, doesn't come up, doesn't uh, type in, then just put the first letter, just put the first initial. There's a few words that they've banned. Okay, brilliant. So you've learned that. Now you know there's only four colours to learn. You've learned one of them. If you're someone that struggles to learn, try and learn one of them. If you our uh, M photography, I'll put this one onto TikTok for onto YouTube for you. Um, I'll, I'll make a note of that now. Um, YouTube, there you go, it's type 10. I will do it now. Okay, so um, there's only four colours to learn. You've learned one of them. You, the my YouTube account, you can. You can subscribe. <laughs> Forgot my wording then. You can subscribe by clicking on the link below. Okay, that's one colour covered. Let's do another one. What's the lane called that you use when you're going off or going onto a motorway? You know, as you're coming onto a motorway, you need to drive on to this special road. 
and you use it to pick up speed until you're driving at the speed, the same speed as the traffic in lane one. Because if you come onto a motorway much slower, people are likely to crash into the back of you. If you come on much faster, you're going to be heading towards people. You need to be travelling at the same speed as traffic. So you use this lane to go onto and pick up speed or go off and slow down. And it's called a slip road, Jones Mensa. Yeah, and Pedro. Well, awesome. It's called a slip road, Stephanie Forium official Islamic. Yeah, you use a slip road to go on and go off a motorway. And green means go. So what colour studs do you think must be next to the slip road? If you use a slip road for go, to go, <laughs> off and on, M photography, that's awesome. And green means go. What colour studs must be next to the slip road? They must be green. <laughs> that's a official Islamic. Yeah, absolutely. They must be green. Now, if you're driving along on a motorway and you're driving and you are next to the slip road, just like this red car here is, it's the tip of this red car is next to the slip road, what lane must you be in? Lane one, the first lane, lane two, the second lane, or lane three, the third lane, the, the, the right-hand lane. You must, Chelsea, the left, Kath, Kath G, the, the, the one, Nicola, one, Lauren Handley, Jodie, Chelsea Foster, I hate you. You must be in lane one. You must be in the first lane if you're driving along and you've got the slip road next to you. So, between lane one and the slip road are green studs. If you're in lane one, you're either going to have, I'll show this picture, it shows it better. If you're in lane one, you're either going to have red studs next to you when you're next to the hard shoulder. When you're next to a slip road, those red studs will change to green. And when you pass the slip road, those green studs will change back to red studs. So when you're in lane one, you'll either have red studs or green studs next to you. Does that make sense? Just put a, a me in the comments if you now know that red studs and green studs are both next to lane one. Red is next to the hard shoulder. Green is next to the slip road. Just think about when you're answering the questions, what do I do? Think about what I've said. I use a slip road to go on and go off. I use the hard shoulder to stop and wait for help. Brilliant. So there are only four colours to learn. And you have learned two of them. There's only two more to learn. <laughs> cool. Some funny comments coming in. It keeps me amused. Okay, let's move on to the next one. What's the centre of a motorway called? Do you know what I mean by the centre of a motorway? The middle bit. So if, if you're on a three-lane motorway, and thank you, Faz A786, if you're on a three-lane motorway and you've got three lanes of traffic going up the road and three lanes of traffic coming down the road and you've got a middle bit where there's a crash barrier, there could be some extra tarmac that you don't drive on. There could be some grass, okay, but it's the middle bit. What's that bit called? Good luck for today, Omri Nali. Yeah, put the, put the initials in if you can't bother typing it all in. The centre of a motorway. The centre of a motorway is called the central reservation. Centre, central, centre, central. Okay, so this bit here, this bit here, okay, it's got a crash barrier. And it stops you going from this side of the carriageway over to that side, yeah? And that's called the central reservation. So the centre of a motorway is called the central reservation. If you didn't know that, don't worry about it, you do now. Just think about the word centre. Now, in my traffic lights, I've got three colours here. I've got red at the top, M photography, 
follow me, uh, um, subscribe to me on YouTube. The link is pinned there for you. So you've got three colours here, red at the top, green at the bottom, and in this, the colour in the centre is amber. If amber is in the centre of my traffic lights, what colour studs do you think are the, are the centre next to the centre of the motorway? What colour must they be? It's not a trick question. I'm not quite, I'm not testing you. It's just centre of the motorway is centre of traffic lights. Yeah, absolutely. Centre of motorway, centre of traffic lights. Yeah. I don't, I never call it orange IHU755 simply because in the theory test, they don't refer to it as orange. They refer to it as amber, okay? Now, if it was me and I was naming that colour, I would name it orange, okay? Um, but it's the, they refer to it as amber. And if you do that, it just makes it less confusing, okay? So amber is in the centre. Brilliant. Okay, so amber's on the right. Brilliant. Red on the left, green on the slip road. Sydney, you know it, Sydney 21. Okay, so if we're driving along and you, you've you got um, amber studs next to you, what lane must you be in? Lane one, the first lane. Lane two, the middle lane. Or lane three, the, the, the furthest right lane. Remember, there's no such thing as a fast or a slow lane. No such thing. It can't possibly be called a fast lane if you're allowed to go 70 miles per hour in all the lanes. So try not to refer to them as fast and slow lanes because that's going to confuse you more about things. Okay, so, so lane three, brilliant. If you're driving between lane three and the central reservation are amber studs. Do you now know, put me in the comments, if you now know where the amber studs are, and you'll know it forever and ever and ever. You'll know forever where the amber studs are. Just put me in the comments if you do. Lurking Echo knows it, gifted, J.D. Louise. It's, oh gosh, Liz, Liz, is that what Liz? Brilliant, you now know that. There's only four colors to learn. You've learned the red and the green. Red and green next to lane one. You've learned the amber next to lane three. You've only got one more colour to learn. Now you're going to have to put the initial in. You can't write the whole word of this in, I don't think. Um, just put the first letter of the word, okay? Um, when you're driving along and you have lines painted in the centre of the road, between the lanes, you have lines between the lanes. What colour are those lines? Just put the first letter in. I don't think you're able to type the whole word in, or you weren't last week anyway. Oh, or you could put a spot in, couldn't you? Yay, Taylor Whiffen, yay. <laughs> Smashed it. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. So white lines are between the lanes. It's working for you. It's not working for me, no, it's not coming up on here, on this live. Um, so some people say they can type it in. Um, but no, only Amanda Stewart, because Amanda has put a space between each letter. No whites has come up for me. <laughs> okay, um, so white lines are between, yeah, it's a good night, there you go. White lines are between the lanes. So what colour studs do you think must be between the lanes? If, li if white lines separate lanes, what colour studs do you think separate? Put a, put a spot in, or a heart in, or a, the first letter in, baby son, you've got it, you've got it. Uh, and I love, I love your imagination, guys, of how to put that this word in. It's brilliant. Uh, yeah, absolutely. White studs are between the lanes. So if you're driving along and you've got white studs to both sides of you, <laughs> what lane must you be in? If it's white studs to this side of you and white studs to this side of you, what lane must you be in? Whisker, Hotel, Indigo, Tango, Echo. <laughs> I, I, knew that would be, I knew that would be you, Truck and I. I should have, I should have guessed that was you. <laughs> I thought, who's Tango?
put all that in. Okay, yeah, you must be in the middle lane. You must be in lane two if it's a three lane motorway. Absolutely well done. So put a put a me in the comments, M-E for me, if you now know that white studs are between the lanes, it's called the median, is it? Oh, so imagine me, you're cleverer than me. White studs are between the lanes, just the same as white lines are between lanes. White studs, white lines. First coffee of the day is kicking in. Oh no! <laughs> Should we block truck and eight? <laughs> okay, so yeah, white studs, white lines, awesome. Brilliant, that's four colours you have learned. Let's come back to the question. Don't worry if you've only learned one or two of them. Please don't worry about that. Not everybody learns at the same rate, okay? So don't compare yourself to other people. Let's come back to the question. Where are amber reflective studs? Lee Nash it is, isn't it? Where are amber reflective studs found on a motorway? Just think about what I said before. Close your eyes and have a think about the technique that I use to help you remember about the amber studs. Okay, and then pop your answer in. Are they A, between the hard shoulder and the carriageway? B, between the acceleration lane and the carriageway? C, between the central reservation and the carriageway? Or D, between each pair of lanes? Marjorie May, thank you. Every morning, 9 till 12 this week. The amber studs, where are they? If you know it, put your answer in. If you're unsure, look at what other people are putting and see what you decide for yourself. Don't worry if you can't learn all of them at once. Don't pressure yourself. Don't be unkind to yourself. If you take a long time to learn, you take a long time to learn. So what? You'll learn it eventually. So amber studs are C, between the central reservation and the, and the carriageway. Okay. The, the, the important that word there is central reservation. Central, centre. The centre colour of my traffic lights is amber. The central reservation studs are amber. Okay. Third C, yeah, absolutely. Amber studs are next to the central reservation. Did you get that one right? Give me a yes, <laughs> one letter away. Well, don't worry about it. We can sometimes learn by getting things wrong, can't we? Like, oh God, yeah, yeah, I remember her saying that, yeah. If we all learned like that, we'd all be in Oxford and Cambridge universities, wouldn't we? We'd all be super geniuses, all right? We're all different. Cool, you got it right, brilliant. If you didn't, now you learn from your mistakes. Absolutely, absolutely you do, yeah, yeah. Why do we need to know the colours? Can, I ask, can you ask me that again at the end and I'll, I'll answer you. So to, um, come to the end of the lesson and ask me that again. Put it in capital letters and I'll remember it. Or a star or something next to it. What colour are the reflective studs between the lanes on a motorway? Truck and eight's answered you. What colour are the reflective studs between the lanes? Amber, white, red or green? Now, just close your eyes for a split second and think, what did I say about between lanes? Kevin, good luck. Have a smiley face with that. You smash it. You'll smash it. Okay, so between the lanes on a motorway, what colour are the studs? Amber, white. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, the colour who must not be named. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You've got it. You've got it. They are white, okay? White lines are between lanes on a road. White studs are between lanes on a road. Put a me if you got that one right. <laughs> Just put a me if you got that one right. And don't worry if you got it wrong. You know, everyone, not everyone gets everything right. And the people who got it right will be very quick to say, I got it right, as they, as they should do. So don't worry if that's not you. But loads of people did. That's awesome. Awesome. Let's move on to the next question. What colour? If you know this, it doesn't matter how it's written in your test. Think about the important words. What colour are the reflective studs between a motorway and a slip road? The important word there is slip road. That's the important word. You know they're talking about reflective studs. You know they're talking about motorways. Now, where? Which one are they talking about? The slip road. What do we use a slip road for? Think about it. Close your eyes. Think about what I said. Are they amber, green, amber, white or red? What do we use a slip road? Oh, Layla, very colourful. What do we use a slip road for? Absolutely, they are, they are green. 
green, green, okay, green studs. Green studs are between the motorway and a slip road. Why, how can you remember that? Green for go, Tilly Louie, Tilly Lou, Lou, Tilly Lou, Lou, is that Tilly Lou? Yeah, absolutely, green for go. We use the slip road, the slip road to go on and go off a motorway. Green means go, Kevin, awesome. Yep, green studs are next to the slip road. Brilliant, put a me in the comments if you got that one right. Put a me in the comments if you got that one right. And don't worry if you didn't, if you're still, moi. <laughs> don't worry if you're still struggling because I'll do this lesson again next week or maybe even later on this week. I'll put this one particular one into um, uh, YouTube. But if you go onto my brand new um, TikTok account, click on the link below, go to the second button down, which is TikTok Theory Revision. They're all in there. All of this is in there. Thanks, Catherine. What colour are the reflective studs between the hard shoulder and the left-hand lane of a motorway? So the important word here is hard shoulder. Yeah, hard shoulder, that's the important word. Are they green, white, amber, or red? Think about what I said about the hard shoulder. What do we use a hard shoulder for? And then think about putting your answer in. We don't think about it, put it in. Okay, are they green, white, amber, or red? A, B, C, or D? Loads of great answers coming in. And they are, they are red, absolutely. Red studs are between the motorway and the hard shoulder. Red means stop and wait. We go on the hard shoulder if we need, if we're broken down and we need to stop and wait for help. Red to stop and wait for help, Nicola. Absolutely, red. Let's have a lesson recap. Let's have a recap. Just throw the colours in at me. As, uh, first letters, just letters only, okay, to make it really, really quick. What colour are next to the hard shoulder? I'll hold this up just to give you a, a physical reminder. What colour studs are next to the hard shoulder? Put, the, put um, the first letter in, or the whole word if you want to, entirely up to you. Or you can put a coloured spot or a coloured heart in. Brilliant. Keep them coming, keep them coming. Rouge. <laughs> Someone's trying to confuse. Cool. KS Baby. Awesome. Thank you, Kobe. Thank you, Kobe, so much. Um, what colour are next to the slip road? Put the first letter in. Next to the slip road. Shiny star. Brilliant. JV. Awesome. Casey Patterson. Love the heart. And they are green. Green studs are next to the slip road. Green means go. We use a slip road for go on and go off. Um, what colour is next to the central reservation, the centre of a motorway? What colour is next to the centre of a motorway? You're doing brilliantly, you really are. This is awesome. What colour is next to the centre of a motorway, the central reservation? Marjamay, brilliant. Now we to Joy, fantastic. Tom 0205, fantastic. Uh, the amber, amber's in the centre. Amber is the centre colour of my traffic lights. Amber's next to the centre of a motorway. And that's called the central reservation. What colour studs are between the lanes? What colour studs are between the lanes on a motorway? The same colour that's between the lines. The lines are white, between the lanes are white studs. Brilliant. That's my traffic light technique. Just throw a, color, a number in there for me. How many studs have you learned? There are four to learn. Red, white, amber, um, 
and green. Have you learned all four? Have you learned three? Have you learned two? Have you learned one colour? Because whatever you've learned, you've learned something you didn't know before. Thank you, Catherine. If you know them all, that's awesome. If you don't, you've just learned one of them, but you can learn another one next week. It's fantastic. Felix, you've learned three. If there's one that you're slightly unsure about, just one, let me know and I'll just say it again for you. Um, so you've learned all four, thanks to you, uh, Isabel Henry. Brilliant. Amber, you're not sure about Amber, okay? Learned them all, learned them previously. Four, I now know. Um, three, Shaq, that's brilliant. You've learned three. You can't always learn everything. Just because other people do, doesn't mean you can. Okay, let's remind you about Amber. You've learned all four, brilliant. A reminder about Amber. Okay, so we've got three three colours here. Amber is in the centre. It's the middle one of my traffic lights. It's the centre. The middle of a motorway or the centre of a motorway is called the central reservation, okay? This bit here. So you've got amber studs are next to the central reservation. Amber's in the centre. Amber's next to the centre of a motorway. Let me just show you a proper picture. There you go. Here, amber studs are next to the centre of a motorway. Amber is in the centre of my traffic lights. Does that make a bit more sense now? But don't worry if it doesn't. Next time you can focus on it or you can go onto my TikTok account, my new TikTok account, follow that, click on the button below, click on the second button down. It's called TikTok Theory Revision. Go onto that and you'll get extra, extra help with that one. So however many you've learned, well done guys, you've done brilliantly joining in um, and making it an interactive lesson. I want to cover that because whether you've learned one colour, whether you've learned four colours, thank you Nicola, <laughs> I love those uh, hand hearts, whether you've learned one um, or, f or all four of them, you'll be able to answer theory test questions. You have, haven't they, Catherine? Everyone's done really, really well. There are 1.9 million people taking tests and only 879,000 passes. Now, in, a, in about three minutes, I'm going to do Ask Annie. So if you've got a question for me, please get ready to type it in and to send it. All four, I feel well clever. So you should, so you should. Feel clever, whatever you've learned. But if you learned all four, so you should, well done. 879,000 passes. <laughs> Nectar. Um, that's a 52% fail rate. 53%, sorry, fail rate. 53% of people are failing. If you're failing once, twice, five times, 10 times, 12 times, 15 times, you're not on your own. There are hundreds, there are thousands of people that are, that's happening to for all kinds of reasons. One of the reasons is that people just do you do this. Put on me in the comments if you've done this. I know that so many people have. They buy, um, a, 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 they buy an app. An app has all the questions. If it's a good app, it will have all the questions and answers in there and practice has a perception clips, which is great, by the way. What people do is they go straight to do a mock test. Who's done that? You'll go straight to do a mock test. And even though you don't even understand what um, a contraflow is, you answer the contraflow question correctly and you feel well clever. You go, yay, I've got that. We, do, we all do it. We're like, yeah, what's a contraflow? No idea. So when the question is asked you in a different way in your real theory test, you've got no idea. You don't know what it even is. You don't know what Dr. ABC even means, but you answer the Dr. ABC question correctly. So you think, yeah, I've got it. I now know all about theory. You don't know what a puffin crossing is or a pelican crossing is, but you memorize the answer. That's why people are failing. They're also failing. Is this you guys? Let me know, put a me in the comments. You also fail because, um, well, one, you're just trying to memorize answers to questions. You, um, you have dyslexia or ADHD. <laughs> All right, Druckenet, you're showing off now. <laughs> you're, you're failing because you don't speak English as a first language. You don't have any motivation to study. You find studying boring. You can't read very well. You have no time to study. There's all kinds of reasons why people are failing. And it's embarrassing, frustrating, a waste of time, a waste of money. And they can't even book their driving test. I don't know the contraflow, but I know the question. Exactly. That is so many people. So many people memorise it. 
what the, quite the answer to contraflow, but they don't know what a contraflow even is. They've never seen one. Um, they, they, don't, <laughs> they don't understand it. And that's not what I want for you. Because you know what? You need to know what a contraflow is in case you're driving in a contraflow system. Don't you? You need to know what it is and what it means. It's not just so you can be answer theory test questions. It's so that you can um, please put gears and brakes questions when it's ask Annie slide in a minute. Otherwise, I miss it. OK, ask Annie will be on the here with a funny picture of, of me, a cartoon picture of me on there. You can't book your driving test. I want to teach you to pass your theory test. I want to make it easy for you for you. I've spent hours thousands of hours, years, finding out what exactly you struggle with and why you struggle with, why you struggle with those things. Then I've spent hours find designing techniques and explanations and lessons. Please ask me questions about gears and brakes when it's Ask Annie slide. I've put all this together into one course. I've put together worksheets. I've put together video tutorials and fact lists. All of those things help you learn the theory of driving. And then you have a go at all of the official questions and a topic mock test. And then when you've done those, you can have a go at full mock tests and case studies. You've got anxiety techniques and question answering question techniques and has a perception techniques. And then you've got games. Everything that you need to be 100% prepared to pass is in this course. It's had more than 10,000 passes so far. The, the cost is only 34 99 That's all it is if you... <laughs> I know, Trucker, I can't... I, I, I've tried. Uh, 34 99 That is the price of one single one-hour driving lesson. That's all it is. You can learn without even trying. Who here has ever learned the words of a song, learned the words of a nursery rhyme, just because they've heard the song? So one day you hear the song, and the next day you hear it again, and maybe the third day you start singing along to the song. You know the words. How do you know the words? They've gone into here. They've gone into your unconscious mind because you've heard them. You can learn without even trying by listening to my facts list that's taken me hours to um, the Brimming Traffic Lights song. I'm sorry, I'm going to sing it again just for that. <laughs> okay, I will in a minute. So you can learn without even trying by listening. Just the same as, I'm going to do it now, just the same as you can learn this, red, red and amber, green, amber, red. No, say it out loud. It stays in your head. You can learn that and it does stay in your head because I've sung it, I've chanted it, I've said it, whatever you want to say. You've learned it. Learn without even trying. Have a look at what's in the course. <laughs> in the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course for all 14 theory topics. There's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to watch all the video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learned the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions when you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic. Going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions techniques for doing hazard perception and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety are you do you or anybody you know suffer from test anxiety there's so many people that do is that you or just put me in the comments if it's you or anybody that you know Jade Lewis, is that who's on here? Oh, thank you for the email, Jade. Yes, I will sort that out later. 
when I finish this live. Thank you so much. I've just got that email popped up. Nerves take over. I know. Thank you, Claire Towie. Hello again. Nerves take over. So many people. My hand shook so much I couldn't even sign my name. I know. It's crazy, isn't it? I suffer from it. But by using your hypnosis section, I was a completely different person on test. That's awesome to hear. Uh, thank you, Jade Louise. Yeah, I've, 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 I'll sort that out. I appreciate it. Well, there's techniques in my course, as Catherine um, has said, there's a, a, a anxiety techniques and hypnosis tracks for you to listen to if you want to. So I can get, take, get rid of that anxiety. There's techniques as well to help you score well in your hazard perception and techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. There's free bonuses, hazard perception course, hypnosis course, two free ebooks. That stuff is worth $34.95 and you only pay once for it. You will quickly see and hear how you're going to pass your test as soon as you start going through the course. It's online course. You can do it whenever you want, however you want. So you can do it on your phone, on your iPad, on your computer, wherever you want. Have a look at it pinned below there for you. And now it's my Ask Annie slide. It's my question time. So you've got a question for me. It will really help me if you ask me a specific question, not a very broad question. Setting up the working class to fail again. What does that mean? I'm not sure. So I'm not sure what that means. Setting, I'm, I'm setting somebody up to fail. I'm not sure what that means. Um, sorry, it's beyond me. Uh, how long is the discount on for? I'm not, I don't know. I've not got any um, time in my head. Okay, so I don't know. Um, no idea. It's been on for a long time. So if you've got any questions, now is the time to ask me. Or we're moving on to my next lesson very very soon so some people ask before why i just wouldn't you wouldn't just use an app well an app has all the questions and all with answers and mock tests case studies and has a perception M my course teaches you first of all so the video tutorials and the worksheets and the fact lists are there to teach you then it's got things like anxiety techniques techniques to um no don't stay quiet no you should stay quiet okay um so all kinds of techniques to help you as well so go all the way through the course and you will not fail go make sure you go all the way through it so gears um can you be more specific what do you want to know about gears i don't want to spend the next hour talking about gears what is it that you particularly struggle with let me know um and um i can't explain how to change gears no uh, you need to go through that with your with your driving instructor really um but yeah so 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 um changing gears is not a theory thing it's a driving thing and i'm doing theory now i'm afraid i have been moving that's awesome um when you feel the effects of engine braking okay good question Cool. So, um, gears control how much power you your engine gives to your wheels, okay? And the lower gears have a lot more power. Just think about it. What gears do you use to start to move away forwards? What gear do you use to start to move away when you go, if you're going to go forwards? If you think this is helping, guys, click on this link to sign up for my course. What gear do you use to move away when you're driving forward? First, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. What gear is it? You use Nicola, you use gear one. You generally use gear one to move away. Now it's really, really hard to get that really massive, your car is a massive lump of metal, yeah, with everything in it. And it could have four or five people inside as well. But first gear will get the car moving. First gear will get it moving, okay? That means, that's because first gear has a lot of power. Not a lot of speed, but it has a lot of power. So first gear has the most power. Lower gears have more power. Higher gears have less power, but more speed, okay? I'll give you another technique to help you remember in a minute. Uh, so that's th one thing. Now the lower gears also have engine braking. You can't go as fast in the lower gears. So lower gears for power, lower gears for engine braking. So if you're going 
up a steep hill, up a steep hill, you go into a lower gear because you need more power to pull yourself up the hill. If you're going down a steep hill, you also go into a lower gear because you've got engine braking. So lower gears have more power, lower gears have more engine braking, okay? Put a yes in the comments or a Y for yes, if that makes sense, or if you just can memorize those words. Um, lower gears have more power, lower gears have the engine braking. You also use lower gears, lower, lower, lower. You also use lower gears, if you need to pick up speed quickly, let's just say you are overtaking somebody. Um, listen, Truck and Nate, you'll agree with this, don't you? You have to know this stuff. If you don't know this about gears and you're driving a car with gears, it's going to be incredibly dangerous. Really dangerous, okay? Lower gears if you want to pick up speed really quickly because the lower gear have more power. Okay, so if you want to overtake a tractor, go into a lower gear, pick up speed, and then change back up into a higher gear. So lower gear for downhill, it will control your speed. Lower gear for uphill, it will give you the power to get up the hill. Lower gear to pick up speed quickly. If you don't know that, as a driver, and you're driving with gears, it could be incredibly dangerous. So lower, lower, lower. Does that make sense? But L for lower, if that makes sense. Practice it in your lessons. You have to know it. If you don't follow that and you're trying to overtake somebody, you might not have the power to overtake them. Okay, so lower, lower, lower. Put an L in the comments if that makes sense. Put an L in the comments if that makes sense. I've not finished the lesson yet, this little section yet so i want some l, one l come in the comments and i've got no l's coming in yes that's full i'm going to go over that in a second completely agreed absolutely if you don't know this and you're going to try to drive up a steep hill your car's going to start juddering if you don't go into a lower gear your car could start juddering Okay. If you don't go to a lower gear when you're going downhill, you could go too fast. If you don't go into a lower gear when you're overtaking, you might not be able to do it safely. Okay. So lower, lower, lower. There's only there's one situation where you need a higher gear than normal. On ice, if you're driving on an icy road, you don't need, you don't want a lot of power because your wheels will spin. So when you're driving on an icy road, you go into a higher gear than normal. So lower, 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 but higher on ice. Gears lower, 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 but higher on ice. Does that make sense? Does that help? Does that make sense? Put a yes in the comments if that makes sense. Put a yes in the comments if that helps you at all. So gears lower, say it out loud to yourself. Gears lower, 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 but higher on ice. And that will help us answer all those gear questions. Bang on. Thank you. <laughs> I have to work it out myself. I have to work this out really, really simply in my own mind before I've developed these little sayings to help you because I can't give you the wrong information. Okay, so when people like Truck and 8 says bang on, I'm like, yes, I've got it. <laughs> lower, lower, gears, lower, 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 but higher on ice. You will not struggle with any of this stuff if you sign up for my course. $34.99, the price of one single one hour driving lesson. Who on here knows me? Will you do a ContraFlow system lesson? Um, not right now. If you ask me at the end of this next lesson, I might be able to talk about it with you for a minute, okay? Um, but who on here knows me? But yes, I know you, or no, I don't you know you. I don't do private lessons, no. But, uh, but you can go here and you can leave a message for a one-to-one -one lesson and somebody called Chris Benstead will get in touch with you and he is awesome how fast for each lane on the motorway the same all lanes are the same speed all lanes are the same speed on the motorway you know it brilliant Cool. Keep putting your answers in. And do you, who wants me to cover um, ABS and ESC? Lower, 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 higher on ice, says Samanda Manta. One, two, one. Awesome. Um, 
You know me on only on TikTok. Yeah, I know, I know, Kaylee. So um, keep putting your keep double tapping the screen. I was looking for cards to help somebody here. So keep double tapping the screen um, and let me know if you know me or not. And let me get up to one hundred and seventy five thousand likes, and then I will go over my next lesson for you. ESC and ABS. Let me go through those lessons. I was finding cards to help somebody who just asked me a particular question about roundabout signs. I'll see if I can find the two signs that will help you. Maybe I can't find them. Oh, almost at the bottom of my pile. Wow. Okay, so here are two roundabout signs. This one is a circular sign. Circle signs are orders. Make a circle with your hand. You can see the shape of an O for order. Circle signs are orders. This is saying that you must go around the roundabout. Blue must do or this road is for you. You must go around. This is a warning sign. All triangle signs are warning signs. And this is warning you about a roundabout. So you must go around the roundabout. You've got a warning about a roundabout. Which one of these is a mini roundabout? Which one's a mini? Is it A or B? Which one is a mini roundabout? Is it A or is it B? mini roundabout. Ah, okay, so lots of people getting mixed up. So really good question you asked there. One of them is a mini roundabout, one of them is a main roundabout. And that one is a mini roundabout. Blue um, is an order and it's a mini roundabout. This one, remember they're warning you about a main, a big roundabout. And this one is a mini roundabout. Okay, so does that make sense? Have you got that now? You might want to screenshot and remind yourself that the blue is the mini and the red is the main roundabout. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. I will cover that more. So thank you for posing that question. Now I realize that some people do get mixed up with those signs. I'm constantly learning what you get mixed up with and what you uh, find easy. And when you post questions, if you've asked other questions, I'm really sorry, I can't go over all questions, um, of course, but it's all in this course. Everything you need to learn is in this course and I'm live every weekday morning. My name is Annie, I'm a driving instructor, I'm an audit trainer, I'm a theory test expert, I'm here to make theory easy for you. If you sign up for my course, you're guaranteed to have the most updated questions in the theory test. This person signed up for my course, said hello, just wanted to say thank you for creating your theory test course. My fiance is dyslexic, and just passed today after using your course. Highly recommend to anyone who's struggling to pass their theory test. The course works. The course teaches you the theory of driving before you start looking at theory test questions. Don't forget to follow me on TikTok. Don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube. My next lesson of today, it's half past 11, so I've got time, is super safety systems. I'm going to be talking about a ABS and ESC, just making it a little bit easier for you. Who here wants to know this lesson? Who, who here ever struggles with these questions and wants to know? If you double tap the screen, get me up to 175,000 likes, and then uh, you, do you, uh, uh, Catherine? A lot of people um, don't understand this stuff, but they can answer the question. The questions are quite easy um, about these, but um, you need to know what they are. So do, double tap the screen and a couple more people will join and the more people I can help every day, the better. I'm on a mission to change the theory test pass rate because I don't like it. And I'm on a mission to make the roads a bit safer because once you have a good understanding of the theory of driving, your driving test will be easier. Your driving, when you pass your test, will be easier. You're much less likely to break the law. Thank you, Zach JR. That's awesome to hear. Just passed my driving test, but still like watching the videos. Brilliant, because Zach, Zach wants to be a safe driver. Zach wants to know, you, you want to know your stuff. If you know your stuff, do you know what? You can drive, you can get from A to B faster if you know your stuff. You're looking, 
you're looking ahead. Safer roads, cheaper insurance. Do you know what? Once you have an accident, the very few of my learners have had accidents actually, and my children passed, well, they're 25 and 26 now, and they've got full no claims. Full no claims because they've never had an accident because they know this stuff. And that's what you can do. You can know this stuff. It's not hard to know. When someone teaches you, that's what I want to do. You do. You want to know your stuff. If you know your stuff, you can drive faster. Um, I don't mean breaking the law, but you can get there quicker. You can save fuel. It's just so much better. It's just a discount for the theory package. Yeah, there is discount. Um, click on this link here and you're getting £75, £70 pound worth of product for £35. Pound. Let's talk about ABS and ESC. ABS stands for... Oh, yeah, 175. Brilliant. ABS stands for Anti-Lock Braking System. And ESC stands for Electronic Stability Control. Uh, no Man Taboo. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, electronic Stability Control. And they're both safety features in your car. What do I mean by that? Well, depending on how old your car is or how new your car is, your car has different safety features. Stuff that happens automatically. You don't, you don't do it, the car does it for you. Like, oh my God, I'm going to forget the name of this again now. I need to write it down. Um, my car is a new car, okay? And it has a safety feature. If I steer, and I'm going, lane assist, thank you, Chuck. <laughs> I knew you'd come in there. It's like my car has lane assist. I'm going to write that down. It has lane assist. Okay, and if I drift out of lane, the car will automatically steer me back. It's a safety feature in my car. The car thinks I've fallen asleep or something. I'm gonna write it down on my blackboard right now. I keep forgetting what it's called while I'm live. I remember as soon as I'm not live, okay? So you knew where I was going straight away. You knew because I've said that hundreds of times now. I keep forgetting what it's called. So my car has got a safety feature in my car that you might not have if your car's a little bit older. So these two are safety features. The one that was first developed was ABS, Anti-Lock Braking System. You'll get to hear about that when about this when you do the emergency stop in your driving lesson. Whose driving instructor has ever talked about ABS with them? Who, who has a bit of an understanding of ABS? Let me know. Just put a me in the comments if you have. I'll put no in the comments. Let me know who knows about ABS. Who has a driving instructor? Never, so not yet, maybe, or maybe they're not going to. Yet, a fair few people have. Your driving instructor should chat to you about it while you're doing the emergency stop exercise in your driving lessons. Truck and eight's taught you, Jade Louise. Awesome. Okay, so what it is, um, as you're driving along, and you, you need to stop. Let's just say this is a, a child. Let's, let's make it a two-year-old toddler. Okay, and you the toddler is in front of you. You put your brakes on really heavily. You put your brakes on really, really heavily. Okay, and what you what might happen is your wheels could lock. Your wheels could stop turning. But you would still be moving, but your wheels wouldn't be turning. What's that called? What's it called when your wheels are not turning, but you're still moving? <laughs> What's that called? Succulent moth, it's called skidding. Yeah, you're skidding along. Skidding along is not good. Can you steer while you're skidding, while your car is just skidding along the road? Can you still steer? Or have you not got control? No, you've got no control. So what ABS does, it detects that your wheels are about to lock. It knows your wheels are about to lock. Now what you could do to stop your wheels from locking is you could come off the brake pedal, but then you don't want to hit this child. So you go back onto the brake pedal, off the brake pedal, onto the brake pedal, and you could do that on and off the brake pedal. And that's called cadence braking. You don't have to remember that word, but you could come, you could press the brake pedal on and off, but there's only so quick that your leg can do that, isn't that? Pumping the brakes, absolutely. What ABS does, ABS automatically pumps the brake, but like hundreds of times, Hundreds and hundreds of times for you. So your brakes will go on and off, on and off. 
so your wheels aren't locked you can still brake it pumps the brakes for you okay that's abs anti-lock braking system what you need to do i talked to my pupils in their driving lessons about it because when abs kicks in you'll feel a judder on the brake pedal like buh, 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 like that on the brake pedal excuse me silly noises okay so you'll feel the brake pedal pulsing it's really really important to keep your foot firmly on the brake pedal because ABS is doing a job for you. Because ABS is activated, you can brake and steer at the same time. Okay, if you're skidding, you can't steer. If your brake, if your uh, if ABS is activated, you can steer. Easily remember that. If you think of ABS, anti-lock braking system allows braking and steering. Okay, so. Put ABS, or put yes, just put a yes in the comments, or a Y for yes, if you now know a bit more about ABS and what it actually is. You need to know it's happening. You need to know what your car is doing for you. You don't want to feel that under your foot and think, what's that? And some people will come off the brake pedal automatically. And then you're gonna be plowing towards this child, which wouldn't be fun. Yeah, so ABS allows braking and steering. You need to remember that. You can still steer when ABS is activated. No, the course is there all the time. This link to get this, um, to get the uh, bonuses, to get the the um, get the extras is, is, is on this line. Let's move on to the next one. If you've got an even newer car, you'll have ESC. ESC is a bit newer than ABS. ABS has been out for years. ESC is newer. So my car has got ESC and ABS, okay? So ESC, how do we avoid ABS? You don't need to avoid it. If you're braking heavily, you need it, okay? Uh, so cute, marry, mocked. Okay, so here's a good question. Let's, let's move back. How can we avoid ABS? By you can avoid it okay by looking well ahead and planning well ahead then you won't need to brake heavily okay you don't need to brake heavily you can brake more controlled what people do some people is they're going along at 30 mile per hour and they see a load of school children and they stay going 30 mile per hour and they see a primary school and a playground and they're still going 30 mile an hour and they see somebody bouncing a ball, a 10 year old bouncing a ball and they're still going 30 mile an hour. You shouldn't be doing that. You should be looking and planning well ahead and easing off well in time. But if you need to stop, has a perception, absolutely. But if you need to stop suddenly, then ABS does a really good job for you. Um, but I, I will always say to my learners um, that an advanced driver, a police driver, um, has to will do, use ABS a lot less than you will use it because they will look and scan well ahead. They will notice the sign. They will notice the um, warning sign, warning them about elderly people maybe crossing. They've seen this warning sign and they'll notice the nursing home and they'll slow down and they'll be scanning the road. They might have the foot over the brake pedal. That's how you can avoid braking heavily. Let's move on to the next one. ESC, Electronic Stability Control. Angry Shortbread. What an awesome name, Angry Shortbread. Yay, congratulations. Okay, so um, I, I might add that into my lesson. So thank you for that question. How can we avoid it? That's a really, really good question. Um, so ESC, Electronic Stability Control. I just want to write down um, that avoid ABS. So I can remember to add that to my question. What a great, great question. So ESC is a newer safety car feature. And I'm, I'm, I'll show you with this picture. Now, this picture took me hours, okay? So um, <laughs> so you need to um, excuse it, but it's not, it's not a, a great picture, but it's trying to show you that you've got a twisty road You've got a twisty road, and if you're on a twisty road, do you agree that you get to here, you will be steering? Who agrees with that? You get to this point, you will be steering about, let me get my steering wheel. You'll be steering about that much. Do you agree? It's a good picture. Thank you, Catherine. Do you agree that when you get to this point here, you would be steering that way? Put a Y for yes if you agree with that. 
Just put the letter Y for yes, if you agree. Just, I want you to be with me. There's 389 people on here. Are you with me? You would be steering. Cool. And when you steer like that, your wheels would start to turn like that. Yeah, do you agree with that? Brilliant, keep, keep double tapping the screen, guys. I'm loving it because I'm getting uh, lots of interaction here. Thank you, Raja, big gun. Um, is this in my course? N n uh, ESC is, this picture isn't. These, these are different, but this, this ESC is in the course. Yeah, okay, so you can see, looking at these red wheels here, you can see they are turned. So if the wheels, if the steering is turned, and the wheels are twisted, what should the car be doing? The car should be steering around the bend, shouldn't it? Do you, put me if you agree, the car should now be starting to turn around the bend. Just put me if you agree with that. If you've got a bit more of an understanding, look at, look at, look at Trucker Nate's comments, okay? Look at those. Okay, cool. So, if your car is still going in a straight line, even though your wheels are turned, that's a problem. You've not got control. Sometimes that happens. Your car doesn't do the <laughs> panic. If, you, if your car is still going straight, your wheels are turned, but your car's going straight. Who agrees? But A, or A, 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 I agree with Annie, that you agree that that's a problem. You've steered, you, your wheels are turned, but you're still going a straight line. That is a problem, isn't it? Yeah, you agree. So what happens is the car, your car, knows how much you've steered. And it knows where your car should be going. So what it does, it puts different amounts of braking on your wheels of the car to make the car go where it's supposed to go. Does that make sense? So don't worry if you don't 100% understand it. You don't need to understand very much about this. But if your car is not going where it's being steered to, your, your, it will automatically put different amounts of braking on different wheels to make your car go that much in that direction. It's very clever, isn't it? And what will happen when ABS, when the, when the braking is happening, as ABS is activated, what will happen is this light will pop up onto your dashboard. Now that light will pop up onto your dashboard. Do you think it will pop up for a few seconds or a few minutes? How long will it take to get this sorted out? Will it be just a couple of seconds or will it be a few minutes? How long for the braking to take effect? Seconds. Yeah, yeah, because as soon as the brake, a bit there, a lot there, maybe no braking there or something, and the car will start to do it, what it wants to do almost immediately. So that light will come on and then go off again. Okay, so it will only be on for a few seconds. So ABS and ESC, two safety features, both use wheel speed sensors. They both know how fast how fast your wheels are moving. They both use wheel speed sensors, but ABESC also uses steering angle sensors. It knows how much you have steered. What question was it, Leighton? What question, what exact question was it? Or, and do you now know the, how to answer it? Um, so ESC also uses steering angle sensors, both safety features. Remember, when a light comes on, then goes off again, it, that's when it's activated. What do you think the problem is if the light stays on? If that light, no, sorry, that light stays on, what do you, why would that be? Why would it stay on? You're having a very technical conversation, somebody. <laughs> Yeah, later, and that's why I'm discussing this now. Okay, so yeah, you now, but now you know it, brilliant. It, do you know what? It can be a little bit of the wording, understanding the wording that they, they want. It would stay on if there was a fault. It would light up 
if it was activated, okay? So if there was a fault, if there's any fault in your car, that's when lights stay on. Does that make sense? So what does it mean if the ESC indicator lamp lights up while you're driving? This is asking you, it lights up. It's not asking you it stays on. It's asking you if it just lights up. So it lights up, then goes off again. Does that make sense? I know people get mixed up with what, what that actually means. And that's what Ashley's done. Got mixed up with that's why I, that's why I, um, I discuss it in this way. Now you know it, Ash, Ashley. Cool, so the ESC system has activated. If it stays on, there's a fault. If it lights up, it's just activated. It will light up and go back off again. Do you now know a little bit more? You don't need to know masses, you're not mechanics, okay? You don't need to know a lot, a lot, but do you now know a bit more about ABS and ESC? What they actually are? They're things that help you to stay safe. You need to know um, that ABS allows braking and steering. You need to know about the, this um, ESC indicator lamp lights up, it's activated. If it stays on, it's a problem. What else do you need to know? You need to know that you should still drive safely. Don't rely on these systems to help you to keep safe. You should still drive safely. That's what you need to know. You can avoid using these things if you drive at appropriate speeds and use hazard awareness. And I had an awesome question before uh, about that and I will include that in this course as soon as I get this lesson, as soon as I get a chance. If I buy the course now and my theory is next week will I have some? Yeah, um, I, I cut a shade. If I buy the course now, and that's my super safety systems lesson. If I buy the course now, what my theory is next week, will I have, still have time um, to go through it? Um, I can't answer that properly because I don't know you and what time you've got, but I can say a lot of people buy the course and do it over the weekend. Some people buy the course. Listen, I've just helped you answer another theory test question just by this lesson. So so even if you do, do, do some of it, it will help you. But yeah, lots of people, thousands of people have done it in a week. Um, most people are not in a hurry, but the people that are in a hurry have done it in four, five, six days. Does that help you? Uh, Needs to know by the course will increase ability to understand your passing theory. Yeah. Listen, even if you can't do all of the course, what you could do, what you could do, if your theory test is tomorrow or the next day, what you could do if you want that extra help is buy the course, do some mock tests, note down what answers you're getting wrong and go and practice those sections of the course. That's not what I'm recommending. I'm recommending you do the course from start to finish. But if your test is in one or two days, do the mock test, and you can find out maybe that all your guess, the questions you get wrong are about documents, rules of the road, and road signs. Go and do those three sections, um, and then go and do, do mock tests again. Does that make sense? If you can't do all of it, just do some of it, um, and that will help you because a lot of people fail by one or two marks. That will help you get those extra one or two marks correct. Because there are 1.9 million people taking tests, there's a 47 percent pass rate. I don't like that pass rate. I don't know what you think. But I don't like the fact that only 47% of people pass. I don't like the fact that people are scraping through because they've guessed two or three of the answers and they're scraping through and they don't have good theory knowledge and they take that low um, lack of theory knowledge onto our roads. How many people are driving along and they don't know that a dual carriageway has a central reservation? They think a dual carriageway is too lanes and therefore when they see two lanes they drive at 70 miles per hour and they're breaking the law so, i mean there's an awful lot of people don't know that they don't know how to signal at roundabouts they haven't got a clue how to position themselves in the correct lane at roundabouts 53 percent of people are failing though for all kinds of reasons I reckon 52.9% of people don't like it yeah i reckon 52.9% of people don't like the fail rate as well the theory test is always done in a building, always. It's not online. The learning is online. The, the test is always done in an official building. Thank you. Uh, who's answered that? Siobhan. Thank you, Siobhan. 
Dual means two. Dual means two carriageways. It doesn't mean two lanes. Dual means two separate carriageways, two separate roads. It does not mean two lanes. Single carriageway road can have two lanes or one lane. A dual carriageway road can have two lanes or one lane. A dual carriageway is two separate carriageways, two separate roads, and they're separated by a physical barrier. Um, I didn't know that before I was a driving instructor. I didn't know it. Uh, failing is embarrassing. It's frustrating. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of money. It's frustrating because you can't even book your driving test. What I want to do is teach you to pass your theory test. Uh, and I can do that with this course. What I've done is I've spent years and years and years, years finding out what it is that you struggle with and why you struggle. And I spent hours, thousands of hours designing, I'm still doing it, designing techniques and explanations and lessons to help you to learn it super easily. H9, if you ask me that in a minute, I will answer you, okay? H9, S8, S, Z, N. Ask Annie slide in a couple of minutes and I will answer you. I've already covered it twice this morning, but I will cover it again. But ask me when it's in the Ask Annie slide. So people struggle with roundabouts. And I've given you, I'm going to give you a really, really easy way of learning and a really easy way of understanding it. I'll give you that in a minute. If you, if you ask me again, you have to remind me. Thank you for the finger heart, Polar, Mam, Polar, Polar, Marie. I've put together, I put all that knowledge, all that learning into worksheets that you can fill in if you want to, video tutorials, fact lists, all the official questions, because the DVSA have looked at my course, and the DVSA have looked at all of my courses actually, and they're really happy with the course, uh, courses, and they've given me all the official questions, not just for car, for ADI, driving instructors, for LGV, lorry drivers, for PCV, bus drivers, for motorbike riders as well. I've got all of the official questions. I've got official practice case studies, and I put in the anxiety techniques, and so much more. You will be 100% prepared to pass when you go through the course. It's had more than 10,000 passes so far. I haven't had the course for very long. I haven't, I only, I've been delivering this kind of stuff for years, but face to face um, in individuals and to class, I had a classroom, I had a, I, I rented a room and I had a room where people used to come and I would deliver lessons to them. In lockdown, I had to get rid of the classroom, didn't know what to do with my time. Well, on day one of lockdown, I started putting this course together for you guys. I didn't want to stop helping. So I did stuff on Zoom and I put this course together. Every day I worked at it. I've only sell it for $34.99 because I know that if you can afford a driving lesson, you can afford the course. It is the cost of one single one hour driving lesson. Click on the link below to sign up. Stay with me. I am finishing very soon, but I will answer a question about roundabouts if you still want to know it. Let me, sh let me show you the course. In the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course for all 14 theory topics. There's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to. Watch all the video tutorials. Then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the fact list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song and you learn the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions. When you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic. Going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions, techniques for doing hazard perception, and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. Thanks for joining again, Drucker Nate. <laughs> nice to see you. Thanks for your help. 
awesome when I get um, other professionals on here because you get a different perspective. They help me to word things differently. It's like, oh yeah, I can say it in this way. I'm always trying to think of ways that help more and more and more people. Um, and sometimes people want a bit more, a bit deeper information and that's what Trucker Nate's been doing. I've, I've saw some comments. Okay, uh, POV, you come here to watch. I don't know what that means, Beckett. Oh, no, no idea what POV means. Anyway, you can do if you suffer. Who on here suffers from anxiety? Let me know. Do you suffer from anxiety? Um, put, put a yes, test anxiety. Put me if it's you or anybody you know. Yeah, Kaylee uh, is a good help, isn't he? Just put me. Double tap the screen, guys. If you want me to go through the roundabouts thing, double tap the screen because I'm supposed to finish in four minutes. But I. Point of view. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Listen, I think it's really quite important to remember. Think of your um, your mum or way older than my, your mum. My children range between 25 and 37. OK, I don't understand this P, this POV and stuff like that. OK, so think about yourself to your mum or nearly as old as your grandma. Maybe <laughs> I don't understand some of this stuff. Anyway, so if you're insulting me, I don't get it. Um, so uh, if you suffer, suffer from test anxiety, I realise Rohimali, yes, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Let's go over. Who is anxious about roundabouts and wants to know about how to answer theory test questions about roundabouts? Because the first way of getting rid of test anxiety is to have good knowledge. If you have good knowledge, that's step one, isn't it? Step two is to tell yourself you're going to pass it. And you can go through the techniques that are in my course. That I, I, I'm, a, um, I'm a therapist. I'm a national practitioner of um, NLP. A master practitioner of NLP. Okay, so let me go through these techniques. But I want, I want more me's. I want more, more, more me's. If I'm going to stay on, because it's, it's two minutes to twelve. I'm supposed to finish at twelve o'clock. If you want me to stay on for an extra couple of minutes, few minutes, and go over roundabouts with you, using my um, awesome picture. <laughs> if you want me to go over that with you now, then please. Put a me in the comments. Get me up to 200,000 likes as quick as you can. And I will stay on and I will do that for you. Because I want you to answer those questions. They are easy to answer when somebody tells you. But what I want you to do is take away any misconceptions you already have. So whatever I tell you, don't say, yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. It's actually super easy. How can I get your course? Um, by clicking on this link. Go into the link below. The top button is... Um, Theory test, there's five green buttons. The top one is theory test course. Click on that and it'll take you straight to buy the course. Okay, so loads of me's come 188 and a half thousand. Let's get a few more and I'm going to go over roundabouts with you and tell you how to answer these questions really, really easily. Because when you're answering these, keep double tapping, wait 189,000. Um, when you're answering these questions, what you need to know for your theory test is about the signaling. They ask you about 190,000. Awesome. Um, they want you to answer questions about indicating because so many people, I've been watching your videos on YouTube and TikTok and past first time, Mia Blankson. Yay, that's awesome. So many people get the in signaling wrong. They forget there's two separate signals. They say, yes, but, or oh yes, but, okay. Yeah, but you said, oh yeah, but my instructor says. There are two signals you need to know about and they're dead easy. I won't overcomplicate them. I'll keep it as simple as I possibly, possibly can. I've got 193,000 likes. If we get to 200,000, then I will go over this with you. In my course though, there are techniques to help you score well in your hazard perception test. 193, 194. The techniques to help you answer any multiple choice question. I call it my five step question technique. The three bonuses are hazard perception course, hypnosis course, worth $9.99, worth $14.99. You're going to get those for free, $195. You're going to get a top 10 reasons for failure ebook. You're going to get the top 20 hardest theory test questions ebook. That's if you sign up while I'm live, $196 and a half, $197. Um, yeah, King Caden, of course I do. <laughs> what would you do, King Caden? What would you do? 
Would you give all everything out for free or would you want to try and tell people, first of all, that the course exists and try and get? What would you do? You tell me. Um, so 199 200,000 almost, there's more people joined, which is what I want, 199.9, 190, 200,000, brilliant. £35 worth of bonuses if you sign up while I'm live. Now, let me go back to, um, let me go back to the roundabouts. Let me just... Um, what I'm going to do, what I like doing is I'm just going to mute people who are not being polite. Okay, you've got to remember that this, I'm here for free. I've been here for three hours for free for you guys. You've got to remember that. Okay, so when you're talking about roundabouts, when you're answering theory test questions about roundabouts, you need to know what signal do I give when I'm driving towards the roundabout and what signal do I give when I'm coming off the roundabout. Yeah, so two separate signals. So just put a yes in the comments if you understand that there are two separate signals. One, when I'm driving towards the roundabout, approaching, and one, when I'm coming off the roundabout, exiting. Put a yes in the comments and really keep that in mind, okay? I'm gonna talk about two separate ones. When you're driving towards a roundabout, you need to tell people what where you're going. You tell people, am I going left? Am I going straight ahead? Or am I going right? Yeah, you need to tell people that. Just the same as if you were at these crossroads. You need to tell people, am I going this way? Am I going this way? Or am I going straight ahead? Put me in the comments, if that makes sense. I need to tell people, I'm driving towards this crossroads or I'm driving towards this roundabout, I need to tell people what way I'm going. So put me in the comments if that makes sense. And it's super easy. In fact, you're going to tell me when you're driving towards these crossroads, if you were gonna be going left, what way would you signal? Just put the first letter of the question in. Just put the first letter of the answer in. If you were gonna be going left, what way would you signal as you were approaching? User, Katie Blondie, Pocket Rocket, awesome name. Yeah, if you were going left, you'd be signaling left, or obviously. The same as if you were at a roundabout. If you were going left, First exit and you were here, you signal left. What about if you were at, you were going to go right? What about if you, you were here and you were going to be turning right? What is the signal? Just put a, the first letter in if you can't be bothered writing it all in. What way? Alicia, yeah. Cloudy, Claudia, Nancy, yeah. Lauren, Lucy, who may, yeah. Brilliant. If you're going to be going right, you'll be signaling right. Now, if you're driving towards, you're approaching these crossroads and you were going to go straight ahead, what way would you be signalling? If you were going straight ahead, what signal would you give to tell people I'm going straight ahead? So I've got no signal, none, you wouldn't, no, no signal needed, none. So... How are people going to know which way you're going if you don't signal? How will people know which way you're going if you don't signal? No signal means straight ahead, says Morgan Sandy. If I don't signal, they know you're not leaving the main road. If you, Maddie, Moo, I love it. If you don't signal, they know you're not leaving the main road. They know you're staying on here. No signal means I'm going straight. Well, a roundabout is just the same as a crossroad, but instead of just driving in a straight line, you have to just drive around the roundabout. So, what signal would you give if you were going straight ahead? What signal is there on the roundabout that says I'm going straight ahead? It's exactly the same as a crossroad. A roundabout is just a road where the road goes bendy. 
okay? You're going straight ahead. So what signal means I'm going Pocket Rocket, Claire Towie, Morgan Stanley, Kovac, absolutely no signal because there is no signal to say I'm going straight ahead. You signal left if you were going left first exit. You signal right if you were going right third exit. But you wouldn't signal if you were going to go straight ahead. That's signal number one. Have you got that? Just put me in the comments if you now know the signal that you should give when you're driving towards a roundabout. It's super easy. It couldn't be easier. If you're going left, signal left. If you're going right, signal right. If you're going straight ahead, you don't signal. That's the same as any other road. It doesn't matter what the road shape is like. If you're going straight ahead, no signal. Brilliant. Now, you're always going to signal though, as you're driving around a roundabout, you're always going to signal to let people know when you're coming off the roundabout. Why do you have to do that? Can anybody put it in? Why do you have to signal to tell people you're coming off the roundabout? Some people know it, shade M, yeah, you know it. Why do you have to signal to tell people you're leaving the roundabout? So cars know when you're coming off, so they know when you're going off. So other car drivers know your intentions, so they know you're exiting the roundabout. Brilliant. People need to know that you're going to go over to the left and you're going to come off the roundabout. So you always signal left to tell people you're coming off the roundabout. Imagine driving around a roundabout and there's a car in front of you then you need to know that car is going to go off. Imagine if you're, dry, you, you're trying to get onto a roundabout. If you're here and you're trying to get onto a roundabout, you need to know that this car is going to come off the roundabout. And if that car is going to come off the roundabout, then you can come onto the roundabout. You need to let people know what you're doing. So you always signal left to come off a roundabout. Put L for left if that makes sense. I really want, I'm, I say, I'm staying on extra time here. Um, it's 10 minutes past my time. So I really want some, a uh, lot and lots and lots of comments. So put L for left. If you now know, you always signal left to exit a roundabout. Is anybody with me guys? Or oh, you're all gone. I need to know, are you with me? Or are you had enough for today? No, a couple of people are with me. Only a couple from 297 people. I want more L's for left. Just put an L for left. If you now know, you always signal left. Claire Tower, you're with me. So, you need, so when do you signal? Well, if you signal too early, you're with me, Catherine. If you signal too early, then that's going to be dangerous. If you signal too late, then there's no point. You need to signal at just the right time. I'll go through on here with you. If you're going left, you're already signaling left here. If you're going down the second exit, you're not going to signal. Then when you get past exit one, you signal left to go down exit two. If you're here and you're going to go right, you signal right. You keep your right signal on. And as you get past exit two, you signal left to come off at exit three. So you always signal left as you pass the junction before yours. Just the same as if that roundabout and those three exits were in a straight road. You don't want to signal too late. You don't want to signal too early. If you're going down exit one, you're signaling left here to go down exit one. If you're going down exit two, you start signaling left just as you're passing exit one. If you're going down exit three, you start signaling left just as you pass by exit two. You don't want to leave it too late. There's no point signaling too late. You don't want to signal too early. It's going to be misleading. You understand now. Is there anybody else? Ivy Moon, that's awesome. Is there anybody? You have to switch lanes. Yeah, of course you have to switch lanes. Yeah, yeah. 
that's why that's another reason why but in a theory test they're asking you about signaling that's what i'm covering here right now but yes you're, you're gonna have to switch lanes awesome does anybody now know let me ask a question then if you're going straight ahead down exit two at this roundabout what signal should you give on the approach to the roundabout D or cush, just D or cush, just have a go, just do it. No signal, brilliant. If you're going straight ahead, what signal should you give to exit the roundabout? It's quite a long sentence if you can be bothered to type a long sentence in. If signal, uh, Ben, yeah, left, brilliant, left, okay, left. When, yeah, absolutely. When do we signal? Just after the previous exit. You're always going to signal left as you pass the exit before the one you want to take. It's quite a long sentence, but I want you to understand it properly. If you're going down exit two, signal left just as you pass exit one. If you're going down exit three, signal left just as you pass exit two. If you're gonna come back down here, we'll call this exit four, you signal left just as you pass exit three. Always signal left just as you pass the exit before the one you want to take. But if you're driving towards a roundabout, don't signal if you're going straight ahead. You're just going straight ahead. It's just one road. <sighs> right, okay, I can't remember who asked me. All of this stuff is in my course. You would not ask if you're in the course. You pay once, you use it for as long as you need it. You've got it forever. You very quickly see and hear how you're going to pass as soon as you start it. This person said, thank you so much, Annie. I passed my theory last Wednesday. Best day of my life. Thank you so much for your theory course. That could be you. Sophie Dixon, I passed my test on Saturday. Just wanted to say thank you so much for these lives and the course. Sophie, that's awesome. Congratulations. Guys, that could be you. These lives and this course, well, the course has everything that you need. I'll pin it again. It's got everything that you need to pass your theory test. These lives just are an interactive way of learning if you want to join it in them as well. This person says, just wanted to know, I passed my theory today and couldn't do it without the help of your course. I mean, honestly, you don't know how much this has meant to me. If you want this to be you, all you've got to do is pay the price of one single one hour driving lesson. Um, I passed my practical all because of you, says Thomas Shelby. Awesome, congratulations. The course is a great investment, says Catherine, because you've got the course forever. When the theory test changes, the course will change. When the highway code changes, the course will change. Sophie Dixon, 22, I couldn't have done it without the course. Thank you so much. It's taken me years and years and years to put this course together. Um, so who asked me, who was it who asked me about roundabouts? Uh, just put, a, I can't remember your name. It was a, it, it was a, a name that I couldn't really read. Um, but who was it? Have I helped? Just put a yes if that's helped you, that explanation. Oh, it was H9. Has it helped you? Do you now understand more about roundabouts? Because actually it's super easy once you... Yeah, it's super easy once somebody explains it to you. Um, but everything that you need is in the course. And I can only cover bits and pieces in these lives, but everything you need is in theory test course. Um, yeah, it's, I mean, it's up to you. It's there for you. I will keep on doing these lives. I will keep on telling you it's there and telling you what's in it. So why don't you look at the pinned link? Um, just click on the pinned link. Um, it's, do, don't forget to subscribe to me on YouTube. You can do that by clicking on the pinned link as well. Uh, follow my, follow me on TikTok, follow this account, but make sure you follow my other account as well, which is called Driving Theory Practice. Click on the link, go to the second button down and it says TikTok Theory Revision. So go onto that and um, follow that as well um, because you'll get all of these slides will be on there. Uh, but if you want to know everything, then please sign up for the course. Um, thank you for your help. H9 is a pleasure. 
um, you're not passed three times. That's why this course is here for you. So you need help, sign up for the course. I'm here every weekday morning, nine till 12. I can only cover bits and pieces with you. Um, sign up for the course if you're struggling. Um, so you don't need to ask me, what can you do to help me? I've done it. I've spent years and years and years, a thousands and thousands of hours putting together this course for you. I now employ so many people who, who are a technical team to help me with the course. So it's there for you. Is there practical stuff in your course? Um, what, let, let, me, let me show you what's in the course. Let me show you what's in the course. Oh, you might have missed this slide and that will help you. Okay, have a look at this video. Oh. In the introduction, you'll see how to go through the course. For all 14 theory topics, there's a worksheet that you can fill in if you want to. Watch all the video tutorials, then listen to the list of facts. Listening to the facts list while you're doing other stuff, like going to the gym or cooking, means that you can use different times to learn and that you can learn without even trying to learn. Just like when you listen to the words of a song, and you learned the words without even trying. Then it goes through all the practice questions. When you get all the questions correct, have a go at the topic mock test. And when you get 10 out of 10 in the topic mock test, move on to the next topic. Going through all theory topics in the same way will make case studies questions simple to answer. The 16 mock tests in the course are designed to cover every single practice question. And the course has got techniques for answering questions, techniques for doing hazard perception, and techniques for getting rid of test anxiety. So that's what's in the course. So is it practical stuff? Well, there's worksheets that you can fill out, um, print off and fill out if you want to. There are facts lists that you can listen to, video tutorials you can watch and you can listen to. There's games that you can play. Um, you, if you've ordered, you did receive it. If you've ordered it and you put in the correct email address, then you will have received it. You might have to check your junk mail. But don't, I can't help you on here. Please go on to testbuddy.app forward slash contact and leave them a message and they will resend it to you. But the email with the course link is automated. So if you've bought it, you will have received it, okay? So go and check your junk, but please message them. Don't don't buy it and don't get the stuff. Don't get the stuff that you've not paid for, okay? You'll check, awesome, awesome. But please message them, that'll help you. Um, I don't want people not being able to find it. Occasionally it goes into people's junk mail and occasionally um, people actually put in one wrong digit in their email address and so it never gets to them. Um, so you need to just, DM them, they'll know you've signed up and they will help you. Cool, so next live lesson tomorrow, what day is it tomorrow? Wednesday and Thursday and Friday at nine till 12. I may come on a couple of evenings, but they won't be scheduled. I'm scheduling nine till 12, Monday to Friday. I'm 20 minutes late today. Um, so you've got 10 more seconds to sign up for the course and to ask me any questions. And then I'm going to go and take my dog for a walk. I'll be back again tomorrow morning. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you again tomorrow. Nosheen, that's awesome to hear. Bye guys, thank you.